What's going on people? My name is Jack. Welcome back to another video here on my channel. This is the Dynamic Link Masterclass. But first, if you're new to the channel, I'm Jack. Like I just said, I produce weekly content based around video editing, videography, and how to make money making videos. Subscribe now if that sounds interesting to you. The Dynamic Link Masterclass. This will teach you how to use Adobe Premiere with Adobe After Effects. Uh, this is something that creates extremely advanced projects. People who are obviously a little bit more on the professional side coming out of amateur are using Dynamic Link if they're creating sort of like higher tier projects. And uh, personally, as a freelancer, I'm using Dynamic Link to make more advanced projects. You know what I mean? So without further ado, we're going to be teaching Dynamic Link with the Dynamic Link Masterclass, how to use Adobe Premiere and After Effects together. There's a whole bunch of different lessons in this video, but if you want to zone in on one specific lesson, the time code for each lesson will be linked below in the description. So if you want to jump ahead and go to a specific lesson or there's something exactly that you want to learn and you can go to the description, read the title of the lesson, decide you want that, click it, and it will take you to that point in the video. Without further ado, the Dynamic Link Masterclass. Let's do it. All right, what's going on guys? My name's Jack. Welcome back to the Dynamic Link Masterclass. Real quick, we're gonna jump into a brief explanation of what Dynamic Link actually is. So I assume, of course, this will more or less just be kind of a refresher. A lot of you will probably understand the basics of Dynamic Link, but if you do not, or if you just understand a little bit, let me put it into perspective. Dynamic Link is essentially, uh, it's in the title, it is linking two different programs. So we are going to be exploring using Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects, two members of the Adobe Creative Suite, the Creative Cloud, if you will. And we're going to explore how to link these two so that what we do in program A, aka Premiere Pro, affects what we're seeing in After Effects. And also what we do in After Effects affects what we're doing in Premiere Pro. So essentially there's a link between the projects, what we do in project A, a, aka program A, Premiere Pro, will also take effect in program B, aka After Effects. Without further ado, let's jump into the Dynamic Link Master Class. All right, guys, welcome back to the Dynamic Link Master Class. We are jumping into how to create a dynamic link from Premiere to After Effects. So going from Premiere and actually opening an After Effects composition and then coming back. So how would we do that? Very, very simple. First off, load up Premiere Pro, and we're just going to go ahead and create a brand new project. Now, there's a couple key things when you create a new project. One of them, arguably the most important, is the actual location. So let's make sure to keep consistent with the locations. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my computer, and I'm actually going to go over to my Dynamic Link Master Class, and I'm just going to select Folder. And it's pretty important to use a root folder when actually using After Effects and Premiere Pro together, um, just for organization and also for peace of mind later down the line when you're using you know, uh, an influx of clips or, or files or whatever. And, you know, overall, just for peace of mind, you want to have one specific root folder. Let's actually call this the Premiere Pro Dynamic Link um, uh, Project. All right, so we got the Premiere Pro Dynamic Link Project. I'm pressing enter. I'm letting this actually start up. And first off, let's actually go ahead and press OK for sure. So I'm, I'm using a different pair of headphones or something. That, 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 was a, uh, that wasn't very relevant. It's just different audio device from last time and let's actually go ahead and import a clip so i'm actually going to go here and i'm actually just going to go ahead and click and import this clip coo 27 this is from my uh my trip to rotterdam um last year so that's that's in the netherlands it was a good little spot and uh basically if i double click this we can load this up in the preview window and i'm just going to scroll along and find the bit where i would actually want it to start this is a kind of a, a pan of these really cool kind of cute houses as you see right here so this is kind of like a a nice little motion here. I'm going to press I to add an endpoint. So this is where my clip starts right there. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and drag and drop that down to the new composition button here, which creates a new uh, a new sequence rather completely out of the clip. And that is our sequence, our Premiere Pro sequence sorted. And to create an actual dynamic link to open After Effects, it is an extremely simple process. All we'd actually want to do is, is literally right click our clip and we would go up here to replace with After Effects Composition. And we actually click that. And once we click replace with After Effects Composition, as we see, After Effects instantly starts loading up. And let's actually just have a look at what this looks like when we actually get in there, just to familiarize you guys with this, uh, you know, with this layout. And 
it loads up. What it'll do is it'll prompt us to actually save a new project because we're creating a dynamic link project. And that is when we revert to what I was telling you guys a minute ago, which is to go to data um, or wherever your, your root folder is and actually find that same root folder. And we're going to call this the um, after effects uh, root project. Or let me have a look at what I called that one. The dynamic, uh, the Premiere Pro dynamic link project. So we're going to call this the after effects dynamic link project simple save and just like that our clip has opened in um after effects and anything that we do to this composition here once we press Control s save that will appear back in here and if we go back here now that that clip doesn't say coo27 it says premiere pro dynamic link project linked comp one after effects dynamic link project that means that these are two linked entities now and that right there concludes how to do dynamic link from premiere to after effects all right guys welcome back to the dynamic link master class now we've just explored and we ended the last quick episode showing how to go from premiere pro to after effects so we opened up a premiere pro uh, sequence we created it using our clip from roto dam and then we actually right clicked it and went to replace with after effects composition and actually created an after effects sequence now hypothetically speaking um, if of course we actually did not do it that method and we were in After Effects originally and we maybe didn't have a Premiere Pro sequence open, how would we actually import that? Say we were creating something awesome in After Effects and then we wanted to quickly import a Premiere Pro sequence just to throw whatever we'd made into it. That would be a slightly different process, but it would be a relatively straightforward one as well. It's nothing too crazy, right? So let's actually explore that. Um, let's actually go here to create new project. And this is a fresh After Effects project right here with nothing here. Now, if we had, you know, just imagine being creating something big here, we wanted to kind of blend it with our, our Premiere Pro sequence. All we'd actually do to, to create that dynamic link from After Effects to Premiere Pro instead of from Premiere Pro to After Effects would just be to go to our project here, right click and actually just go ahead and press import import Adobe Premiere Pro project. If we click that, we can actually find our root folder and we can get our Dyna Premiere Pro dynamic link project and press open. And it says select sequence, all sequences. We want everything to import, but we could also just select our one. Of course, we only have one, but let's, let's just go ahead and press all just for the, the sake of importing an entire project. Press OK. And it says uh, that cannot be imported because it's not a recognized file type. That's absolutely fine. What that right there is 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 just our uh, our, our our link, right? Our our link folder, um, or our our, our link uh, file or whatever. That, that, that's uh, it doesn't matter. We can double click our our clip, and um, if we actually go here and just delete that, that right there uh, doesn't need to be on the screen because of course uh, that is kind of the remnants from what we've just done there. But of course, um, if if we'd be doing this. We wouldn't be importing a project that already has a, a link going on because we'd be creating it. So that little error wouldn't pop up there in a, uh, a live situation. Of course, we uh, we just used the same project that we created the link for before. So that was a leftover thing. Of course, I just need to explain that. Uh, but basically, here it is. Now, anything we did here, again, if we were just to press Control S um, and then save this, this new project, we want to save it in the exact place um, as we saved our, our, our you know, our Premiere Profile project. Uh, project as well um but of course we're not going to do that because we're just exploring a kind of another method to actually do the same thing but we've just done it in the more efficient way uh the premiere pro to after effects is a more effective way to do it but of course for the uh, you know purposes of education we're going to explore both potential ways to uh, to do this however we got the little error because we were importing a project which had already created a dynamic link and that right there is how to create a dynamic link from adobe after effects to Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Dynamic Link Masterclass. We are actually gonna just do a little bit more kind of further confirming about the organization side of stuff. This is, I promise you, something you wanna get kind of on top of from the very start, and you don't wanna have to kind of go back and, and play catch up, so to speak. But here is our Adobe Premiere Pro folder. We've also got, uh, or project rather, right? We've also got our Adobe After Effects project. And it's the same exact thing. We've created a dynamic link between. However, the actual key thing that's held both of these together is the fact that we have a root folder. Everything that we are doing to either of these, because although each of them has a separate project file, right? And even, even though both of them are in a separate program entirely, these are the same project. When we're looking at After Effects, 
we're looking at the After Effects version of this project. When we're looking at Premiere Pro here, we're looking at the Premiere Pro version of these projects, right? Of this project. So this is one project in the same. And what makes it one project is the dynamic link, right? The actual link between these two. So that's something that's a little bit hard to get your head around from the start. But of course, once you do wrap your head around, uh, it makes perfect sense. These are one project, which means that, of course, one project, you're not putting one project in three different folders. No, you you're organize everything in one root home folder so that you obviously know where everything's at. And, uh, you know, you don't run into an organizational nightmare later down the road when you, you feel as though you need to find something or whatever the case may be, right? Whatever number of, of sort of standard problems which will inevitably arise if you're not organizing stuff from the start. And uh, organization has always been a kind of a key that I've talked about throughout the course of my tutorials. And it's no different for dynamic link. So let that just be, uh, you know, stated from the start. Anything you do, whether it be a graphic, whether it be a, a project, whether it be a clip, anything, actually put it in a dynamic link uh, root folder that shares and houses all the clips for not only the Premiere Pro project, but also the After Effects project. Because although they're two different files, as you see here, they're one project in the same. So keep that in mind. Keep that as the way you're framing it throughout the course of the course. Course of the course. Funny little twist of words there. And without further ado, guys, let's crack on with the Dynamic Link Master Class. All right, guys, welcome back to the Dynamic Link Master Class. What I've done on the screen, if you're having a look, is I've actually gone ahead and closed down our Premiere Pro project. I've closed down our After Effects project, and I'm actually going to do something just to kind of follow along with everything we've done over so far, we're going to do an exercise right now, which is essentially going to let you guys download the clips that I was using from the start. And we've added another one in there as well. And together, we're going to import clips, create a Premiere Pro project, and then create a dynamic link with After Effects. So before we get started with that, let's actually just delete what we've done so far. I know that might seem a little bit counterintuitive, but it's, it was really just to demonstrate. And now I want to kind of you know, officialize everything in your mind by doing it together. So let's delete those projects. They're useless to me. And go down to the resources and download COO09 and COO27. These are two clips from Rotterdam. One of the clips is of me um, actually, uh, actually filming, right? So this is uh, my friend Vedette, who's obviously filming behind the scenes of me actually filming. And then the other clip is is the clip that, you know, we went over together from the start, which is the clip of, um, uh, for my camera, of this kind of nice pan of the cube houses in the background and of this nice tree right here. So we're going to combine these two shots. Obviously, they're shot in the exact same scene at the exact same time. And we're going to create a dynamic link using them. But first off, let's press new project in Premiere Pro. And let's actually make sure our root folder is the actual folder we are actually using for this entire project. So for me, it's dynamic link masterclass. For you, it could be uh, this folder is the one I'm being organized in, right? <laughs> Whatever you deem to, uh, to to name it, that's that's the folder you should organize everything in from start to finish. Let's press select folder. And let's actually call this the, uh, the Premiere Pro dynamic link project. Simple, same exact name as last time. Press enter and we'll wait for the project to generate itself. And just like that, the project has generated itself. Now let's actually go over to our dynamic link folder or for you, just go to your downloads after you've downloaded these from resources. Let's click and drag and click and hold and just go ahead and import them into our media down here. Let's actually go ahead and double click the COO 27 and just scroll along like we uh, did in the demonstration and find that bit where 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 a, a nice pan starts just like that. Let's press I, which is the actual in point, and let's drag and drop that down here to the create new sequence. And let's actually go ahead and press the space bar just to play it for a little bit, right? And what I'm probably going to do is just have five seconds of that clip. So I'm actually just pressing the keys to, to go over to get exactly five seconds. I'm going to press C to get my, uh, my cut tool, right? My scissor tool, my razor blade, if you will, all of the above. I'm going to click to chop. Click the right-hand side and just go ahead and delete that. Then I'm going to double-click the clip that I know is me. And I'm actually just going to scroll along or just go ahead and play it a little bit, right? Until we actually come to a point where, you know, maybe I'm doing a, a movement that I like or whatever the case may be. So it looks like here could be a decent bit. Um, you know, I'm getting the, or my friend's getting the over-the-shoulder shot. We can press I again to create that endpoint. And actually just press space bar to play. And it looks like that's a, that's a decent little little motion right there because then he starts moving over to the left so um, or the right rather so if we press uh o which is the out point 
and actually just go ahead and click and drag that that button there which is the video only click and drag that here and if we go over to nine seconds um, it looks like that's a decent bit right there so if we actually press the space bar to play we have the kind of first person shot and then me but it looks like he's shot in 4k so it's right click that go to set to frame size move it back and let's actually just let this play out right so as we see here it's nicely playing and then it cuts the clip of me from from sort of the first hand uh, perspective and in fact I think it could be cooler if uh, if that's first right so I'm, I'm literally just creating a normal premiere pro sequence something that's that's kind of normal it's filming me and then it cuts to the first person of what's actually coming out of my camera and I think that works out really nicely so it's also actually, actually we just go ahead and press control s which saves the project nice everything's everything's tied in nicely right there um and in fact we could even uh if you notice there's a slight different difference between these clips of me and the clips from my actual camera so we could actually go ahead up here to color and then just literally bump the uh the the contrast up a little bit and um and maybe bring the whites down a little bit and and the blacks up a little bit and now if we press play those are looking a little bit more similar and this right there is a totally live uh you know a, a, a real scenario right now you know if i imported two clips and they didn't look together or they didn't look they would like to you know have consistency to it because it's obviously crucial in terms of color you know if the colors look inc inconsistent from shot one to shot b uh, or shot a to shot b that's a absolute telltale sign of uh you know something you do not want to do you want the nice seamless look but that right there is a formatted sequence right very very formatted everything is uh essentially how it would be in a live project i'm trying to walk you guys through a live project right now i have uh you know color corrected my clip so to speak now all we'd want to do if we actually want to open these up is literally highlight them right click and go to replace with after effects composition and just like that if you guys have followed through from you know start to finish right now or start to current sta sta place <laughs> then we are right here and we've actually just been prompted to create our after effects project and again we can do the exact same thing or a similar strategy that we were following before which is to call this the after effects dynamic link project and just like that we have created our project in premiere which has now become one one single file because that's a composition and our dynamic link has appeared down here in our premiere pro and in after effects we have our composition that has been created using the um using the dynamic link and as you see that anything we've done to this clip if we see here if we go up to effects it has the lumetri color effect added to it if we click that and turn it off the effect stays on it so it preserves all aspects of a clip if you if you're importing a clip to to after uh, to after effects and you're afraid you know it's not going to bring over everything that you kind of desired that's something you could put to bed real quick because the fact that when you actually create a dynamic link it is creating a dynamic link with all aspects it is replicating that premiere pro project and it's literally just throwing it into after effects and of course because it's adobe on adobe Everything works seamlessly, and that's why Dynamic Link is something that is extremely overpowered and something you definitely, definitely want to be utilizing from project to project. But that right there is our exercise of how to actually download the clips and create a Premiere Pro sequence and then right-click and create the Dynamic Link with Adobe after effects that right there guys sums up the basics of the dynamic link masterclass course i'll see you guys in the upcoming sections it's about to get interesting all right guys welcome back to the dynamic link master class we are currently in our premiere pro project and essentially uh because we've created the dynamic link right here it is one big file now instead of two particular clips which is of course how we composed it now if we press space to play it it's me and then the actual first person shot of what you what you're seeing directly from my camera and if we actually go over here to after effects we actually have two of these clips and they are you know more easily editable of course in after effects because it's given us the specific clips we can latch on to each specific clip and because of that, what we're going to be doing is exploring how to create an advanced title sequence, right? So, of course, Premiere Pro, you're relatively limited with your titles. But, of course, at the same, in the same breath, as soon as I say that, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm hit with the, the massive, you know, library of titles that they have, of course. But in terms of super advanced stuff, you are a little bit limited. However, 
you've got stuff. Don't get me wrong. Let me quickly show you the type of titles you're able to do in house, AKA in premiere loads of stuff. And as you see right here, it's got a massive kind of template library. Some of these stuff are pre-made and, and, and there's stuff that, well, of course it's a template. So all of it's pre-made, but some of the stuff is pre-made by Adobe and it comes preloaded in the, uh, the essential elements or the essential, essential graphics. Right. And some of them are premium, um, our premium, right, which is stuff I've paid for or stuff that's been sent to me by companies, whatever the case may be. And again, you can just load them up and use them. And these are awesome. In terms of pre-made uh, title sequences, these are, these are great stuff. However, when you want to take it that step further, the advanced title sequences, Premiere does slack off a little bit. However, of course, you know, they're meant for all the kind of simpler stuff. If we want to use those advanced titles, we jump into After Effects, and that's exactly what we're about to do. So, Let's come over to our After Effects composition, and pretty much the idea for this effect is I'm going to press play, and it's me on the screen, and then as soon as it comes over to this clip, I want a very cool advanced title to pop up. An advanced title to me is something we cannot do in Premiere Pro, something that's uh, at least much harder to execute in Premiere Pro. And to start that off, what I want to do is go up here and actually click the rectangle tool, and I want to literally just draw a rectangle in the middle of the screen. Just something like that, right? And the reason for that is because this is going to be the kind of the outline, the border of our of our shape. Essentially, I'm trying to build a, a animated graphic here. So I'm going to drag that into the middle, and I'm also going to hold Y and get the anchor point and just put that, you know, roughly in the middle, all right? And what I actually want to go ahead and do is scroll along a little bit, scroll along a couple, a couple frames so that it doesn't happen right away. It doesn't happen instantly when it changes clip, but it happens shortly after the clip changes and I want to press control shift D to actually trim that down and actually press S which pops up the scale properties and what I want to do is I want to actually go ahead go over a few frames maybe to about here and press a keyframe for scale which tells the program that obviously at that time um, and that place in the actual composition the graphic should be full and then I want to go to the beginning and I want to untick the actual link between these two. And I want to literally just scale down the right hand side one, aka the vertical axis. And I want to actually just put that as zero. So when we press play, this has a kind of, um, you know, animated effect where it animates itself on more or less, right? And I actually maybe want to speed that up a little bit so that it happens a little bit, a little bit quicker, maybe a tiniest bit longer. All right. So just like that, we've got this graphic that animates itself on the screen. And then what we can also do is we can also just quickly animate it off the screen as well. Just so that, you know, it, it obviously has some sort of uh, progress. If we press Control C and Control V, we can copy that keyframe here and actually just simply go across a few and, uh, and actually just go ahead and click that so that it's highlighted, press Control C and Control V, and we've copied that keyframe as well. And just like that, if we go over here and press Spacebar to play, we've got this graphic that animates itself on the screen and then animates itself off the screen. Nice. Wonderful. Um, now, can anyone guess what we're going to put inside this graphic? Some text. Awesome. Let's actually press Control T to get the text tool. Click on the screen and type in Rotterdam. In fact, um, I might even try just all caps. All capitals, it obviously gives us more uh, of an established text. And we can actually just go ahead and click and scale that down. And I just want to go ahead and fit it into the particular um, title sort of uh, graphic if you will, and actually let's press Control C, highlight that, and I actually just want to go ahead and type in uh, Gotham, right? I want to get a nice, nice uh, bold font, just like that. And in fact, what we could do is we could even we could even scale that over a little bit, right? So in fact, if I uh, or actually I think it's probably easier just to bring the Rotterdam text down a little bit, and uh, and then we've got this title that clearly says Rotterdam, and we can actually pop that in the middle right there. It's looking pretty nice. Awesome. Um, if we go to the beginning right here, of course, we want to press Control Shift D and knock that off. And then what I actually want to do is I want to more or less copy and paste the exact same uh, keyframes, but I won't copy and paste it. I'll actually just go ahead and and maybe go maybe go here and actually press uh, you know S, click, go to the beginning, or maybe go go a little bit in actually, so that it doesn't start at the exact same time. Untick and just go ahead and pop that on zero. So. If we actually go to the beginning now, we have this uh, this text that pops up. But in fact, I'm, I'm actually going to bring that to the beginning. So, um, what happens is it is it brings itself up. But look how look how messed up that looks. What we want to do here is actually fix the anchor point. That right there, how it doesn't actually fit on the screen. That's a 
typical anchor point mistake. So as we see here, the anchor points at the bottom, if we hold Y and drag that to the actual middle, we have successfully fixed this. If we go to the beginning now, it actually opens in a, uh, a respectable manner, if you will. And I actually just want to do something real quick. I want to uh, go ahead and just tone down how big the title is. So it actually goes to 70, right? And we actually, of course, need to copy that variable over here or else it will get bigger. Pop that there. So we now have this, this graphic that animates itself open. Awesome. Wonderful. It's looking very cool. However, the actual, uh, you know, signature element hasn't even taken place yet and it will become very obvious, but I want to literally just go ahead and click and copy. Go over here, press control V to paste. Again, copy the start keyframe, come to the end, press control V to paste again so that it animates itself out successfully. And now the advanced effect is about to take place. What I want to do is I want to actually click the Rotterdam text. I want to right click and go to pre-compose and what we have here is a Rotterdam 2 comp 1. If we press OK, we've created a pre-composition. So if we double click that, we can go in and this is a whole nother composition. And this is where it gets fun. This is where I want to go over to this clip here, press Control C, go to the different pre-composition, aka the text pre-comp, go here and press Control V, paste it, and then I want to bring it to the bottom and I want to go here to track mat and go to alpha mat Rotterdam 2. And just like that, if we go over here, we now see that the video appears inside of the text. And if we actually go here, we can actually go ahead and, uh, you know, even go ahead and right click control, uh, not even right click, just control shift D, trim that pre comp down. And now if we go here to the beginning and press spacebar to play, we're going to get the clip of me on the screen, which is great. And then it chops here and opens up the advanced title where you've got text that you can see through and the video is actually see-through. We've created this graphic where it appears as though, you know, it's almost like an optical illusion. It looks like you could just see straight through this graphic. And in fact, we can enhance this even, even a little bit more, honestly. If we go over here to, a, to presets, right? And we actually just type in a drop shadow, right? And drag and drop the drop shadow onto it. And, uh, and maybe and maybe up that a little bit. Um, um, but actually, my bad, uh, drop shadow. Let's put that on the shape layer below. I dragged it to the text. If we drag the drop shadow to the shape layer below, now what we're able to do is if we want to bring that opacity up, whatever the case may be, we're able to get a nice kind of a standout-ish effect using the drop shadow. And just like that, we've got that. In fact, we could even could even just bring it bring it down a little bit. In fact, I might even do like a 180 degrees so, so that it's actually coming directly down. And just like that, guys, we have actually created an advanced title sequence using the dynamic link. That's something right there that, you know, would at the very least be much harder to do in Premiere. And realistically, it's just not something you want to really do in Premiere. It's not built for that type of stuff. You can much more effectively and much more easily do an effect like that in After Effects. But just like that, that right there is how to create a advanced title sequence using dynamic link and in fact we could take it a step further we could literally just keep layering layering effects on top we could type in vibrance and go ahead and drag and drop some some vibrance to the actual um you know to this layer right here if we turn the saturation all the way up we've got that nice glowing kind of more colorful text if we turn that all the way up you know if we go here now and, and press spacebar to play it We've got a very nice title right here that pops up and it looks nice and colorful and overall is very standout-ish. And uh, just like that, guys, that is how you create an advanced title sequence in Adobe After Effects and Adobe Premiere Pro using the dynamic link feature, which essentially links everything together and enables us to create something amazing like this. And let's actually literally just go ahead and press Control S, save it. And now let's go over here to Premiere and go ahead and press play in Premiere, aka space. And just like that, we are going to have the advanced title appear in Premiere Pro when we, of course, did none of that inside of Premiere Pro and did all of it in After Effects. But all we do is press Control S, aka save, and our hard work in After Effects transfers itself to Premiere Pro via Dynamic Link. All right, guys, welcome back to the Dynamic Link Masterclass. We're going to now explore how to actually insert motion track text using dynamic link. Of course, motion tracking is not something that's extensively available in Premiere Pro. There's some minor semi, uh, you know, resemblances of, of a motion uh, track sort of effect, but it's definitely not motion tracking. Definitely not at all to the extent that, you know, of course, Adobe After Effects offers you motion tracking. So without further ado, let's explore how we'd actually take a Premiere Pro sequence 
and make it motion trackable and actually, you know, perform the task of motion tracking it. So we're actually going to be using this particular clip right here, which is conveniently named motion track. Let's go ahead and click and drag that into our sequence right now. And that's going to pop up down here. Let's actually click and drag that into this button right here, which is, of course, a new sequence. We'll be moving past the uh, the other sequence that, that we obviously did in the last section right here, um, which was, of course, exploring how to create the uh, advanced titles, which, of course, turned out really nice. But let's have a look at this right here. And, uh, you know, let's put ourselves in the mind of doing a review video. So I do a lot of review videos for my YouTube channel. A company will send me a product. And, uh, you know, potentially, I'm, you know, let's say I'm trying to make a, a nice title or a, a pretty cool, you know, dynamic title for this review video. And, uh, you know, I want to do something cool with it. What I would do is, uh, you know, let's have a look at this clip real quick. But we can actually go ahead and mute that, actually. And what I do is I'd actually want to motion track this so I could actually you know, have some text attached to this. And let's just make pretend that I'm reviewing this iPhone, right? And this is a clip of me simply holding up the iPhone box. And if we wanted to make a pretty cool kind of dynamic title that that actually, you know, follows this and actually, you know, gets bigger as I put the iPhone closer and then kind of shrinks back down as I, as I pull it away over the course of, let's say, five seconds. So we can actually go ahead and shop that um, at the five second mark, which means we've got this clip right here, which goes up and then I just pull it back. Nice and simple clip. Uh, let's have a look at how we'd actually motion track the text. First off, what we'd of course want to do is actually right click and go ahead and replace with After Effects Composition. If we go ahead and just press that, replace with After Effects Composition, that's actually just going to load up our dynamic link After Effects project right here because it's already loaded up. And But what it's going to do, of course, is create a, a new uh, dynamic link composition. It's not obviously going to throw it into the other one because that was a uh, previous uh, sequence. And this will actually create a new dynamic link. As we look down here, the uh, the files changed the Premiere Pro dynamic link with uh, After Effects, and it's changed obviously to the dynamic link kind of pink, pink uh, uh, clip, if you will. And um, if we come back here, this is of course where we're going to be doing our editing now. So how will we go about motion tracking it? It's very very simple. It's all actually going to be done using the tracker right here. But there's a couple key elements, of course, we got to do first, which is uh, create a couple. Uh, things to attach our tracks to. So first off, let's go up here to layer. Let's go to new. Let's uh, create a null. A null is just sort of like a blank object, which doesn't really exist that we can kind of use just to, uh, you know, attach stuff to and uh, uh, have some properties and stuff like that. Next, what we want to actually do is go ahead and uh, quickly design our text. Now, this could be done before or after. It doesn't matter. But just for the sake of positioning stuff, before we get started with the track, we'll, we'll just create our text. And let's just create a simple text that says iPhone uh 32 gb right iphone 32 gigabyte i i, I guess i guess that would be a, a relevant um statistic or uh, to, to throw in there um but what i'm also going to go ahead and do is is just see if i can't just pull this up a little bit and also make it a little bit smaller maybe and uh and uh just just go ahead and pull it up here right so i'm pretty much just sizing the thing up a little bit just getting it uh getting it sort of position how maybe a title normally would be in one of my review videos right here. So we can actually go ahead and attach that right there, which means that at the very start, the uh, the text iPhone 32 gigabyte is going to be there or maybe maybe down here or eh, yeah, yeah we, we can go ahead and throw it up there, right? So it's going to be basically on the side. And uh, what we can actually go ahead and do after that is get the actual clip itself. And we're going to want to go over here to tracker. And then we're going to want to click track motion. Now, this obviously creates a track point. However, right now we're doing kind of like a more uh, advanced, slightly more advanced track rather than just one track point. So this is the position track, as we can see right here. But what we also want to do is turn on the rotation and the scale track. And those will be created under one other point as well. Um, now, with the actual position track, let's click and hold and drag that into the middle of this. So what we're really looking for, the science behind it, is two objects which are different from the kind of rest of the stuff surrounding them. So that would definitely stand out as a point that is different, that it can track the motion of, because everything around it is red, but that's black, which obviously means it's going to stand out. And if we take the other point and put it around the actual iPhone Apple, and obviously make it just a little bit bigger, so that it is kind of a uh, fully, fully uh, encompassing the whole thing, that's also a different piece in the scene, if you will, because of course everything around it is red and the iPhone logo is white, which means it's uh, you know, a good a good kind of thing for the tracker to lock onto and it can kind of take the the properties from that being the rotation of the scale. So obviously what we're looking for is just two kind of different positions uh, or different objects in the scene that uh, you know aren't the same as what's around them. And then what we're gonna want to do is uh, right click the edit target 
and go here and actually select the null and press OK. And then we're simply going to want to uh, just go ahead and fit that, which is not, not mandatory, but I'm just going to do it for the sake of it. And then press the play button down here. And what that's going to do now is go through frame by frame and analyze the actual motion of this clip. And it's going to take all those properties and it's creating keyframes, which I'll load up the clip in a minute. And we will have created keyframes for every single one of these points. And it's tracking that motion perfectly for us to then literally just sync up the text with the, the drag of a, a, a simple parent link. And we'll be able to actually attach everything together and uh, sort of create the text to completely resemble um, or completely follow the track. And just like that, it finishes the track just like that. And we can go ahead and click apply down here and press OK. Awesome. That jumps us back here. And we can actually just go ahead and see now all these different keyframes that have been created because, of course, we track the motion. Now, imagine having to do all that manually. It's, uh, it, it, I mean, not impossible, but just ridiculous. You know, I, I definitely don't have the stomach for it. And then essentially all we want to do is come back here to the beginning, have a look at the text, and simply click and drag the parent link to the null. And then when we press spacebar to play, or we can actually just go ahead and mute that real quick because I had some volume on, that text fully follows the motion, the rotation, the scale, the position, everything, it's fully tracked to the actual box. And, you know, we, we can make that text stand out a bit more. Of course, it's white. We could go over here and, and get drop shadow, a little bit of drop shadow, drag and drop that on there. Maybe, uh, you know, up the softness a little bit, uh, br bring up the uh, opacity, make it a little bit more uh, defined. And just like that, we've got the iPhone 32 gigabyte, you know, text. In fact, you know, on a review, I, I might even might even go ahead and uh, and, and edit the, uh, the, the, the 32 gigabyte down here. And um and make it you know the 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 same color as, as maybe the iPhone something like that that's definitely something I would do in a in a review video just to kind of match the the aesthetic of it if you will or the uh, the colors overall and uh, make it look a little bit more together but just like that that is a advanced title and again of course we've done all that work here and all we pre do is press Control S save and we go back here uh, into Adobe Premiere Pro and now we press spacebar and just like that we've got this motion tracked. Uh, you know, title right here, which is, you know, for our, our, our make-believe review video that we're doing. And it says iPhone 32 gigabyte. And just like that, it is inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. And of course, we did none of that motion tracking inside Adobe Premiere Pro. We did the entirety of it inside Adobe After Effects. And just like that, that is motion track text using dynamic link between Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects. All right, guys, welcome back to the Dynamic Link Masterclass. We are continuing on with how to animate graphics and title sequences. So this is going to be how to kind of take a, uh, I'm going to call it basic graphic, if you will, and turn it into an advanced graphic. Now, of course, in Premiere Pro, that might that might not be given them the most credit because Premiere have some pretty, pretty advanced graphics for sure. But I'm talking about how to take a, a, a basic graphic, not... No, no, not a, uh, a motion graphic, right? So I'm going to show you some preset motion graphics that they have in, in Premiere Pro, which are really good, right? You can go over here to the graphics and then the, uh, the template library, and you are greeted with a whole bunch of cool stuff. Like, for example, if we play this, this is a pre-animated uh, lower third for your name. Of course, you could click it and, and fully customize it, you know, put your name there, whatever the case may be. Um, however, this sort of stuff doesn't give you any further options. So say we didn't want it to animate down here and we wanted it to be in the middle of the screen and then sort of just float around, you know, maybe that's the desired effect we're going for. We actually don't have the ability to do that because this is a, uh, a pre-made, right? It's pre-animated. However, if we wanted to animate some stuff from scratch ourselves, um, it would be a, you know, a slightly different process. And overall, again, of course, because of dynamic link, it is far easier and far more effective as well to do that in After Effects. So without further ado, let's actually go ahead and import a clip. This one right here is going to be the first person camera. We're going to be continuing this, uh, you know, this hypothesis, uh, this, this um, hypothetical situation that we're doing a product review. So, right, this is a a, a video, I'll, I'll mute the, the audio layer, but it's a video of me testing out a new camera monitor. The the product in question is the uh, the monitor on the top of the camera. And more or less, let's explore a, uh, a live scenario, right? Which which might be, um, I'd be wanting to do an annotation for this, right? So for example, we could uh, press Control T, create a text layer. And for example, uh, you know, say uh, uh, camera moni monitor, camera monitor. Um, review right just just hypothetically speaking say this was the uh the text right 
And this right here, you're, you're looking at a basic text layer. So if we had this right here, we had this, this basic text and we wanted to put it in the top right or something like that. And, 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 and even maybe, maybe get the, the, the review and, and change it to slightly red or something like that. Um, and if we had text like that in the top right corner, it's not looking, you know, especially interesting, right? Is it? Or even in the bottom right corner, basically just like a lower third or, or top third camera monitor review is looking like a very basic piece of text. Obviously, there's no kind of motion to it, anything like that. And, you know, we could explore the the, the kind of the, the you know, keyframes inside Premiere, you know, by creating some keyframes and, and then, you know, go into the beginning and animating it off. But you can only really do basic stuff, like, for example, that. And, of course, if, if we sped it up, that would be a, a quicker effect. However, all we have to do is create a dynamic link, which, of course, we've, we've already created. All we have to do is literally highlight our project right here, right-click it, and actually just go ahead and replace with After Effects Composition. And we're actually going to load up both of these layers, both of the text layer and the actual video layer in After Effects. And uh, then what we can actually do going forward is actually just go ahead and select the text layer and we can go up here to animation, apply animation preset, and then actually just throw on any number of presets from the you know hundreds if not thousands of presets you can find in the uh, Adobe After Effects preset library. And uh, you know, for example, let's get a transition, a, a spiral in. Now all of a sudden the, the text starts off the screen. Um, and two seconds, let me go ahead and mute that again. And all of a sudden it animates itself on the screen. Also, maybe we, uh, maybe we want some, some movement, you know what I mean? Some, some position, some position wiggle, right? Which means we, we want our text to have a little bit of life to it, which means that not only does it come on the screen, but it's also moving around a little bit to create the, uh, you know, the look that it's not just a stagnant piece of text right there. And of course, you know, that remains fully customizable because that looks like a little bit much, right? It, in a live situation, let's say we might only want 10 wiggle them out, which means that it's not going so crazy, but it's moving around a little bit, as you see right there. In fact, I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit. And then of course, what we could do is some stylistic kind of choices, maybe some drop shadow. Drop shadow, you'll notice throughout the course of, of this program, it's definitely something I like to add to amplify stuff. And it's obviously a, a nice simple effect to amplify um, and make something stand out a little bit more just like that and you know just like that we've created an advanced title sequence where we've taken a basic title in premiere which was you know pretty boring it, it, you know if i say so say, say so myself don't worry i'm not going to get offended i was the one who created it but it's boring at the end of the day and we've opened that up in uh, adobe after effects using dynamic link and we've been able to enhance it a little bit more right now of course this remains customizable we could double click this um which of course in after Effects, when it loads up, it kind of presents it as, as a pre-composition, as you see right here. But then, of course, to, you know, get inside a pre-composition, as we know, all we do is double click and it actually presents us a fully customizable text layer. So if we had some second thoughts about this red and we wanted to, you know, double click that and maybe bring that over to a green or something like that, again, all of that stuff remains customizable at any time. Also, if we wanted to highlight everything and, and, and uh, maybe turn it to Gotham, right? nice, nice font or whatever the case may be, or maybe we want to, you know, have a different font family for that one. Maybe that's just normal Gotham and the review. You know what I mean? It's little stylistic things like that. Everything remains 100% customizable because that is crucial. If you, you know, have a little bit of a second thought down the road, you want to be able to go back and customize that. But overall, that right there is how to actually create animated custom uh, graphics inside of Dynamic Link, aka I mean, it's not inside of Dynamic Link, inside of Premiere Pro and After Effects using Dynamic Link. Overall, that right there is a brief overview. Of course, it is the exact same for graphics. Of course, that's that's a title sequence right there. But if we wanted to, you know, have a logo or something like that in the bottom, bottom hand corner, right? It would be the exact same process. It would literally just be, you know, put that into Premiere over here. And of course, if we come back to Premiere, press Control S and save um, the, you know, the graphic appears down here. Oh, <laughs> and look at that. It, uh... It, it comes in red and then jumps over to uh then jumps over to to green I'm not entirely sure um, why that is but <laughs> it is what it is we, we, we'd fix that if this was a if this was a live project before uh, for sure but overall as you can see right there it has taken effect in Adobe Premiere Pro we did it in Adobe After Effects we created a nice little bit more animation and you know the process to 
create a nice little wiggle like that would be just kind of ridiculous. You'd kind of just have to get the layer and just have to move it around a little bit and just animate the uh, the you know the keyframes manually, which you know is quite ridiculous. I think if we load up the um, effects in here, right? We've got the zoom spiral, but we've also got that wiggle, which I don't even yeah I don't even know if they necessarily even show us all the all the um, keyframes, but you can rest assured there's plenty keyframes being used to create that wiggle effect. But that right there is the animating graphics and title sequences using Dynamic Link. Hi right, guys, welcome back to the Dynamic Link Masterclass. We finalized the last episode doing some animated text. Right now we got this text that pops up, moves around the screen, and uh, overall it is a advanced text layer in the sense that you can't necessarily do that stuff or execute it easily at the very least within Adobe Premiere Pro. We're essentially, you know, looking for the, the flaws or the gaps in Adobe Premiere Pro, and we're trying to, you know, complement those by using the dynamic link to actually be able to load up this more advanced program and, uh, you know, kind of do stuff that you can't so easily do in Premiere Pro. But right now we're going to be doing an exercise, and we're going to be taking uh, a clip and a logo and kind of doing a similar thing that we've just done uh, right here, but actually doing it together so you guys can, you know, stand a better chance at retaining that information. So if you guys go to the resources, you can download this clip right here, which is just a clip of me sort of looking around and we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to animate the logo over here on, on, on the, uh, on the left hand side so that it appears that I'm looking at the logo. The logo is going to be TQ9 Media, my production company logo. So if you guys go to resources, download both of those, I'm just going to select both of them and drag and drop them into our uh, Premiere Pro project. Then I'm going to click the um, 89, COO 89, right? Just the standard Sony name for the clip. Drag that over here and press spacebar to actually play. And what I want to do is uh, I, I want to actually wait until I'm looking over here and then cut. So as soon as I actually look, about the 5 second and 18 milliseconds mark, I'm going to chop that down. Look where, where I actually look over there and then... As soon as, uh, as soon as this sort of hand rub goes away, <laughs> which is a funny movement <laughs> anyways, I'm actually going to cut that. So I've just kind of spliced up this little clip, which by the way, Premiere Pro right away is where you want to do your overall cutting and, and kind of putting everything together, right? After Effects is a much uh, more complex cutting system. It's not so simple. You just get the little razor tool and chop something out. So Premiere 100% of the time is where you want to be doing your your overall you know chops and cuts now once we've actually done that I want to actually drag and drop the TQ9 logo and all we're doing here is a little bit of positioning so when I look over here right when I look here we want to get the logo we want to hit the position we want to bring it over here scale it down maybe a little bit sort of just bring it over here so it hovers around the center of the side of me looking pretty good not too shabby and another great thing that uh the Premiere Pro is useful for is uh framing stuff so what we can do is we can go to sequence settings have a look and this is a if we go here and we actually go to custom this is a 1920 by 1080 p sequence that's absolutely awesome great um what we could do if we want to uh just create a little bit more space to work with is drop this to a 1280 by 720p sequence um ideally drop from a 4k to a 1080p but 7 uh 1080p to 720 is all right as well um if, if you've got nothing else uh, you know to do, if you can't do 4K, you can't do 4K. And if we actually scroll over a bit now, what we've done is we framed me a little bit more. So I'm actually more obviously on the screen. Now what we can do is we can get the TQ9 media logo. We can bring it over a little bit more, scale it, maybe scale it down the tiniest bit just so it, it kind of fits in there. Um, and maybe even put it up here in this sort of blank space. And now we can actually go ahead and play. And, 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 and what we're looking at is a TQ9 logo plus me that's been positioned. Now, of course, this is entirely the positioning side, but what I'm trying to get you guys in the habit of is spotting the strengths of each individual program. You've got Premiere Pro, which is by far a much more easy and, and much sim more simplistic program to compile and frame stuff just like this. And we could press Control S, we could save that. Um, however, now we want to hand it off to uh, you know the bigger brother, so to speak, After Effects, where we can load the same exact thing up, the same exact sequence, but we can amplify it much further. So let's actually highlight it, go ahead and right click and click replace with After Effects composition. And let's actually go ahead and just let, let that do its thing, let After Effects do its uh, its thing, process and import everything over. And just like that, we have a, uh, you know, a, a file which is, you know, formatted, it's framed and everything. It, it takes all the aspect ratios, everything like that. So 
more or less, this is a <laughs> duplication, essentially. This is the, the After Effects equivalent of the Premiere Pro sequence. And what I'm actually going to be doing is going up here, is actually selecting our logo, going up here to Animation, going up here to Apply Animation Preset. And what I want to actually go ahead and do is just fly, um, is throw a couple different um, fly-in animations on it, just see what's looking good. So just like that, within the drag and drop of something, not even drag and drop, the double click, really. I'm going to press Control z and undo that. We're able to get that one. And I want to just keep looking through until I can see anything that's that's really to my liking. We've got some pretty cool stuff like this, the 3D pixelation. That's kind of looking cool. So if we go over here, we could do this 3D pixelation right here. And then I do look over there. So maybe if we press Control d or if we select the clip and press Control d that's duplicate. If we actually um, maybe maybe bring bring that and, and make it smaller over here so we've got a, a little tiki non media logo forming up here so that it makes sense that i actually look up there you see what i mean i'm just doing a little bit of a of of sort of messing around with it but as you see right there there is another tiki non media that's this forming up there at the top sort of just as i just as i have a look over there you can see it and um then my uh, my hood goes in front of it so i might want to make that a little bit smaller and, and put that there but of course that's just one demonstration of one animation that we've done in a couple seconds right so of course we could do any number of animations if we wanted to but it looks like uh, i'm liking this one i got the birdman hand rub going down right there and uh just like that we have actually successfully animated a logo in and out and uh you know it's it's very very simple i mean the word animate might even be a little bit uh, ambiguous here but of course what i want to do is uh, i want to just further complement the scene right so i want to go over here and I want to actually just type in a uh, wiggle and I want to go ahead and grab some wiggle position, drag and drop that there. I want to drop the, uh, the wiggle amount to about 10 and select it, press control C, go over to the other clip, the other logo, press control V, which is paste. And now just like that, if we press space bar to play, we have this logo, which is on the screen, but also hovers around a bit as you see. So it's got a little bit more life to it. And just like that, you know, we've, uh, we've created something which is a bit more, uh, would you say dynamic or a little bit more? It's got multi layers to it, right? It's multifaceted. It's got a little bit more life to it. Essentially, you don't want just a boring, plain old graphic that's doing nothing that looks a little bit, you know, artificial. You want something that is, you know, embedded in the scene and overall has life to it and uh, kind of makes everything tie in together. But that right there is how to actually animate a graphic or logo. So, what we've done is we literally just imported that and we have actually gone ahead and, um, you know, further customized it to our liking. And again, like normal, control S, save. We come back over to Premiere Pro. And just like that, we have a, you know, advanced animated logo. One of the one of the left, one on the top right. Both of them are looking absolutely awesome. And honestly, this right here is the name of the game of Dynamic Link. You build something simple or simple-ish in Premiere Pro, you throw it into After Effects, you take it to that next level. That right there is how to animate logos, the exercise of the Dynamic Link Masterclass. All right, guys, welcome back to the Adobe Dynamic Link Masterclass. This right here is going to be adding effects with Dynamic Link. So we're actually going to be exploring the process of actually taking this particular clip right here, this clip on the screen here of me sort of pretending to look around, and I'm sort of pretending that I'm in sort of like alternate reality or whatever, if if you will. It, it's looking like uh, I'm pretending that I sort of got teleported if you will to like an ultimate alternate universe and we obviously we have to make the visual match my reaction my reaction is pretty strong right here as you see I'm, I'm looking at the camera and then i'm like oh wow as if i've been sort of teleported somewhere else and then i'm looking around assessing the landscape and then i kind of shake it off and and it looks like it was just a bad dream so we want to actually make the visuals match my reaction and this is always a fun uh you know sort of exercise if you will so without further ado let's get into it coo04 is the clip let's drag and drop that into good old-fashioned adobe premiere pro let's let that load up down here let's drag it down to the new sequence button which creates a brand new sequence matching the actual dimension so let's just press space and play this um so actually let's go ahead and mute it as well and as we see right here we've got this clip which i look around i'm assessing what's going on in that kind of shake it off and then and and, and then proceed to look around and we can we can sort of chop it right after there sort of sort of after i i'm done doing my little my little acting role and it is going to be 
relatively simple to do this. I mean, of course, you guys by now are getting the hang of how to do dynamic link, which obviously is the simplest part of it. It's really the, uh, you know, the effects and blending everything together to make it work together that, that, you know, can get a little bit tricky. But without further ado, let's right click the clip. Let's do what we always do. Let's replace with After Effects composition and let's let After Effects load itself up in a brand new composition. There we go. It's loaded up. As we can see right there, we can fit it to the screen. We can actually press spacebar to play it. We can actually just go ahead and mute it as well because it has not kept the mute. And right here, we've got the clip of me reacting. I, I'm thinking of some cool stuff I could do right away to, uh, you know, to start complementing this. First off is actually changing the environment color-wise. So what I want to do is I want to go over here and I want to type in CC Lens. CC Lens is a very cool effect which... I'll drag and drop and let you see it right here. It's sort of this sort of like almost fisheye, hourglassy type of type of magic ball type of effect. But you can use it nicely to transition just like that. If we're to animate it from out to in, especially if we're doing it over uh, the same layer, it could be really nice. So let's delete CC lens. Let's press Control D and duplicate the clip and bring over CC lens. Bring it on top of this clip right here and actually just have it on zero. Let's actually play until I actually do the the movement. So I want to go from normal, which is right about there, and let's turn a size keyframe on, and then just over a few frames until the effect has meant to have taken place, if you will. So just like that, the effect should have taken place, which means I could scale this up. And just like that, we have this effect now that as soon as I, I kind of react, it looks like I react for a reason, right? I've clearly reacted because we've you know, gone through this teleport or, you know, whatever you want to use your, your imagination to say that this right here is, right? So I've gone through this wormhole or whatever, and now I'm in an alternate reality. However, it still looks the exact same. So we have to start doing some, some drastic changes to the environment to make this a believable, you know, warp hole or, or, you know, that we're in space or something. And the way we do that is first off, get the colors right. So what I want to do is I want to go over here and type in a color. And the first effect, ironically, that pops up colorized blue wash is going to be perfect for setting the scene. So let's drag and drop that to our top layer. And instantly that changes the color of me and it changes the color of the environment. So what we can do now is go to the beginning. And when we actually, you know, press play, we've got this effect now that it, it transitions us to a, a new kind of world. As you see right here, the, the colors are all different. And overall this you know, already our mind's telling us that this is like a, you know, a new place, alien world. Something's going on, right? We're setting the scene that this is a different place. This isn't the same place. And we're trying to make it believable that we've been transported somehow to this particular place. Now, what I'm going to do now is just layer stuff on top of each other, right? And the layer stuff on top of each other is good because one effect can't really do everything for us. But right now we're operating with two effects. We're operating with the CC lens transition in and the colorized blue wash uh, sort of color grade color correction, if you will. So that's two effects so far. Let's see what happens when we start overlaying even more effects, all right? So what I wanna go ahead and do right now is actually just go ahead and duplicate this layer again. Press Control Shift D, and this will make sense in a second. And what I wanna do is I want to actually go ahead and draw a circle probably around, or more or less around the middle, right? And I'm actually going to select the mask down here. And what this is, is going to be masking out the sort of my face and overall my, my reaction, right? Because what I want to do is I want to actually start putting, in fact, I might even fully, fully cover my face with that. Yeah. And what I want to do is I want to actually go ahead and click invert, which means that we are not showing, it's not taking effect over my face, right? Whatever we're going to do is not taking effect over my face. And we can actually just go ahead and and turn the feather up a little bit. And this will make perfect sense in a second because what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go to the layer below this one. And I'm actually just gonna go over here and I'm gonna type in CC Light Burst and I'm gonna get CC Light Burst 2.5. Drag and drop that to the, the layer below the one that we have the mask of. And this will start getting very apparent what we've actually done once the effect starts taking place. And just like that, what we've actually done is what we need to do is we need to go here and uninvert the mask actually my bad i realized that that, that was actually dumb um it's the you see what happens if it's inverted the effect takes place on my face i'm trying to make it take place around my face so my face is not affected by the light burst 
um, we can actually go ahead and turn up the um, the the uh, the mask feather, of course, right? And now what we're going to be doing is going down here and actually go ahead and find the CC light burst. And let's just actually go ahead and first drop that to quarter so we can actually deal with this a little bit more effectively. And as you see right here, if we want to kind of enhance the environment around us, all we have to do is just bring these rays up. And just like that, we're able to create this, this sort of effect where let's press Control S, let's save this, and let's actually press Spacebar to play. But just like that, the environment has taken an extreme turn now. You can't even necessarily tell what's going on in the background because of this light rays, these CC light rays. And just like that, we have transformed environment. It's getting more and more believable by the second that we have actually, you know, ch changed changed worlds, if you will. As you see right here, it literally looks just like a face and everything around me is sort of this like warp going on. And that right there is, you know, you're starting to see the power of not just one effect, not just two effects, but let's say three, four, five different effects stacked on top of each other. And, you know, it, it can start really creating some some next level stuff. And, you know, of course, anytime we, we could get our mask and we could um we could bring that in a little bit if we wanted to, right? If we wanted to, uh, to get the face glowing a, a little bit, just so just so it's it's infringing a little bit on us, right? So so it's come a little bit closer. You can still see me perfect, but there's a little bit of light rays. And now there's this bit right here where I shake it off. And this is interesting. So what we want to do here is make this work now, right? So we, we've, we've got my reaction of introducing it and we've come to this crazy world. But what happens when I shake it off? We need to make the visual represent the shake as well. So as soon as this shake starts happening, what I want to do is I want to actually go ahead and, and, uh, and press Control Shift D on both of these clips right here. And actually just go ahead and type in wiggle. Wiggle, we wanna give a bit of life to, to this. And I wanna type, uh, drag wiggle rama to that and also wiggle rama to this. So if we actually give this a play, we're gonna see what this is gonna be looking like, but um, it's looking like I'm gonna press control, <laughs> control Z a couple times and undo that. Let's see what happens if we uh, create both of these into a pre-composition, which means we've sort of um, isolated them into one layer, which means they're they're more or less going to respond the same way. Um, however, of course, we are going to be dealing with something like that. What we could do is we could get the wiggle rama, but what we could do is we could zoom it in a bunch and see what happens now. And it's looking like that's probably not to our liking. And again, once you get a few effects in, guys, this is a good demonstration to show you guys that uh, more or less what we're going to want to be doing is... Uh, well, we're probably going to run into some sort of situation where we've got to fix something, right? That's pretty much natural. Um, and let's, let's wait till we see this right here. Let's actually throw some scale on there, some some rotation. I'm throwing a couple different things that would be changing the size of the image. The rotation's looking like a little bit too much. So let's have a look right now. And if we press Control shift d there. So that's looking obviously like just far too much. What we're going to do is press Control shift d a couple times. Get it gone, get it gone. Right-click these two, pre-compose. And let's see just if gelatine. What's gelatine going to be like? So that goes insane. But it could potentially work. Let's have a look. It's really trial and error, guys. You know, there's no like set you know, guaranteed way to do it. Just like that, as you see right there, if we press play now, it transports into this crazy world. I'm looking around. It's this alternate universe, and then I shake it off. And that was a, a nice little shake-off effect. But you see, we, we failed twice at doing the shake-off effect. And the third time, lucky, we got something that, that, that looked pretty good. In fact, we could even maybe extend that a bit, see what that looks like. Yeah. You know, so that right there is a perfect demonstration for you guys. No one gets it perfect first time. I mean, somebody will, I'm sure, but overall, it's more um, of a of a replicatable process to you know trial and error, trial and error, and then you know the second, third time you uh, you get an effect that looks nice. But overall, right there, within the course of 10, 15 minutes, we have taken a you know a clip of me just acting, pretending in in my living room right here, pretending that there's something going along. Uh, going around or, you know, <laughs> around me or whatever. And then I've just obviously tried to replicate what should be around me or what my imagination can tell me should be around me. And overall, we have, uh, you know, we've created a really nice effect using dynamic link between Premiere Pro and After Effects. And all we have to do is save it. And if we actually come 
over here to good old fashioned Premiere Pro. We can let everything sync through, conforming. Do, 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 do. It's doing its thing. It's actually bringing everything over. No problem. What I'm doing is I'm currently waiting to see everything load. Awesome. Now we can press space and play this, but let's actually just save it real quick because it's, it's lagging a little bit. Of course, we're dealing with a bunch of extremely advanced effects, so let's drop that down to um, an eighth quality and see if we can't get a preview going. It's looking like Premiere is being a little bit a little bit against us today with this preview right now. Um, this will definitely be a common occurrence. You know, if you've done some major stuff, that right there is by far the most intensive stuff we've done so far in the program. And when you're jumping back over to Premiere, a lot of the times it'll take a second to uh, to obviously let that load up. It's all in there because it's dynamic link, but it might just stutter a little bit because it's new, new information for the program to process, whatever the case may be. Um, but what we're going to want to do is actually go over here and, uh, and just see if we can't get this to, uh, to pop up. Um, we'll give that a minute. Come over here. Just, just click on the clip. Give it a second to render. I guess it's, uh, processing what's going down under there. And just like that, it has started to present itself a little bit. <laughs> it's one frame. What I'm going to go ahead and assume is that Premiere is, uh, is just being a little bit on the on the slow side today, but we can press spacebar, play it, and it's rendered a little bit. It's processed everything over a bit. As we see, it's a bit glitchy, but at least we got to see a bit of the start. But just like that, our advanced effects, which we would not be able to do something as complex as this and as you know nicely executed in a short amount of time as this right here, if we were not being able to use Dynamic Link. Dynamic Link is, uh, you know, at this point of the course, I'm sure you guys are seeing all the absolute benefits from it. But that right there is advanced effects using Dynamic Link with Premiere Pro and After Effects, transporting us from my living room, right, into a whole new world. Thank you guys for watching this particular episode. Stuff's getting super interesting going forward. All right, guys, welcome back to the Dynamic Link Masterclass. We're going to be exploring how to improve a Premiere Pro sequence with advanced tools. So this is where we left off, right? We, we, we created this absolutely awesome advanced scene using Dynamic Link and After Effects and, and really beefed it up with some crazy effects, layered a whole bunch of stuff on top of each other, four different layers with, you know, five, five to ten different effects going on uh, combined between all of them. And... Um, I think we're getting some weird graphics card issues right there, but ignore that. Overall, we're going to try and take this another step forward. I want to show you guys some advanced tools. Now, After Effects has something called the Roto Brush, an extremely, extremely helpful tool for singling anything out in a scene. Now, Premiere Pro does not have that, but of course, Premiere Pro has the ability to create dynamic links so we can tap into, again, like the bigger brother, which is After Effects, who can help us out. So let's actually go ahead and import COO36 into Premiere Pro. I'm just going to go ahead and import that in. And I'm going to double click it. I'm going to load it up. Press play. This is basically a review, uh, a clip from a product review I did the other week, basically of this particular console right here, which is like a, uh, a photo and video editing console. You can assign different keys to different shortcuts on your on your mouse and keyboard, etc., to save time designing stuff and editing, right? So let's drag and drop that, make a new sequence, Actually, we scroll down here and let's just play it until, um, I guess we could just keep the entirety of it. Yeah, yeah, we, we can just keep the entirety of it. So what we want to do is I want to try and isolate the actual product itself. And if we were to do that in Premiere, you know, it's loosely possible. We could, of course, go here and, 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 and create a mask around it, whatever the case may be, and, and try and manually, you know, outline the shape or whatever, you know what I mean? And, and then go ahead and keyframe every single position to, uh, to kind of isolate it but that's not efficient at all i mean i'm almost laughing just saying that because it's so far from efficient it's not even funny especially when you find out that you know this is just a far easier 10x easier solution over in after effects so let's actually right click the clip go up here to replace with after effects composition as we're so comfortable and used to doing right now we're going to load up here having a look at our crazy alien stuff but it's going to load us into a new composition and if we press space we could just play this the exact same clip Basically, I want to use the Roto Brush, aka an advanced tool available to you in After Effects. I want to go ahead and isolate this right here and then fade it into its normal background. But I, I want to give it kind of an artificial background to start off with, which will, if that doesn't make sense to you, it'll make sense in a second. Let's double click the clip while selecting the Roto Brush. We get taken to the layer tab over here and our brush appears. And we can actually simply start to actually just 
draw in the space of the Torbox editing console. And just like that, this was a very accurate draw by the looks of it. It's drawn a pink outline around our particular object. And now what we can actually do is um, actually just go ahead and, and press play. However, I just realized I've, I've drawn that way over here. I, I kind of want start, to start it from here, which is, you know, the beginning of the clip. That was, you know, a, a mishap on my on my my part. But that's actually more to my liking because I get to show you guys, of course, a live demonstration of how to remove stuff that you wouldn't want selected, right? So before we had a perfect select, it perfectly latched onto our object, which sometimes will happen, but often not. So if you get this, right, where it's highlighted a bit of our object, but not fully, it's kind of highlighted the table, hold Alt and your brush changes to red, right? So let's fit the screen and hold Alt and it changes to red. And now when you draw, that is removing the outline. So as you see, we're telling the program to remove the outline there and it's latched on and because it's using AI, it's figured out that this right here is the object that we want. And now we can press the space bar and it will frame by frame go through and just try and kind of latch onto this object and keep it isolated. And what we're gonna be able to do when we return after you know, it's, it's rendered this and it usually only processes 10 frames at a time, as you see. So process 10 frames and then we have to just scroll over and go frame by frame until the, the, uh, the rotoscope disappears and then just redraw our outline around it. And again, just go ahead and press alt and draw around everything that's not what we want. And just there by the looks of it, we've highlighted again, press space again, and it will start figuring more out. And as you see right here, all the green is stuff that's actually been processed and everything else is, is, you know, dead space that has yet to be isolated. And that's why it could go through 10 frames, uh, you know, by 10 frames and isolate stuff. And I'm just going to do another 10 frames. So we've got at least one second of content, um, isolated. And just like that, if we press space bar again, just to continuously play through it, it will frame by frame go through and uh, and be figuring this one out. And it's having a little bit of a delay right there. So let's, uh, let's skip over one, two. We could just manually go frame by frame, figure that one out. And then let's actually just go to the beginning. And we can actually go ahead and play. And just like that, it's isolated the shape. And then around the course of the two second mark, somewhere around there, I believe it will actually come back and... We're, we're, I mean, we're, we're going to have a look. As you see right there, it comes back around the 2 minute and 20 second mark. But we've actually isolated it up until that point. Um, and we can actually do something pretty cool, which is go ahead and add an artificial background and then fade it into its normal background. So I actually want to go up here to layer, go to new, and go to solid. And I actually just want to create a solid. It could be any color. You know, orange doesn't matter. We're going to overlay something on top of it. And... Um, more or less, we can go over here and I want to actually highlight animation presets. Click animation preset, then go to backgrounds and I want to scroll down and get one of them. I'm going to grab infection, drag and drop it. And just like that, what we're dealing with is a animated background. I'm going to scroll over till the animation starts, press control shift D, bring that to the beginning. So the animation to start it for the beginning, but we've got this, this loose object, which is floating. And then of course it just kind of, you know, hard cuts straight back to the to the background. But what I want to do is have a nice fade in. So let's actually press control shift D, duplicate it, go to the bottom layer and remove the roto brush effect from the bottom layer. Then press T, which is opacity, make a keyframe at where the rotoscope runs out and the background comes back in. Then go over a few more frames and simply drop that to zero. And now what we've done is created this fade in effect. And mixing the background with the roto brush effect on the tour box, uh, tour box with the already built-in movement because the camera movement, we've created a really nice effect right there. And that right there is something that we've done in a matter of seconds, um, a, a matter of minutes, if you will. I think, you know, max five, 10 minutes, right? Something like that. And now what we could even do is this is a seven second sequence. So we could go over here to, you know, three and a half seconds and I could Press Control Shift D, delete all of those, and actually just go ahead and and right click, go to pre compose, pre compose it. Again, Control Shift D, delete, Control D to duplicate. Right click, go to uh, time reverse layer, drag it over here, and now if we actually go ahead and press play from the beginning, we've got this effect that shows the tour box fading in, 
and then it comes straight back in, as you see right there, and of course, it's glitched out a little bit, but comes straight back in, reverses back down, and repeats the effect. After Effects is struggling a little bit to, to process that, but as you see right there, I press Control S, and just like that, we have built this, uh, this sort of reverse back in on itself effect, and I can go back to the beginning, play this, it comes back out, and it fades to the background and then zooms straight back in using that reverse effect. And I'll just let that process the whole, you know, extra area right now, um, just so we can actually load this back up in, uh, in Premiere, actually. And in fact, if that's all saved, so if I come back over to Premiere, now we've got this, this isolated object with the artificial background, as you see, um, and it, you know, it zooms in and then it, it simply fades back to, to normal and then comes straight back down and repeats the effect again. And just like that, guys, that right there is how to use advanced tools in After Effects. Not only have I showed you the Roto Brush, which is definitely an advanced tool, but it's something that's really not available in Premiere, which is, you know, obviously a crucial, crucial thing that you should be utilizing with Dynamic Link. Because if Premiere, you know, is slacking in in, in one aspect, After Effects is picking up the weight. I can, uh, I can absolutely assure you that. So that right there is advanced tools in After Effects and Adobe Premiere Pro using Dynamic Link. We're going to return with more stuff to do with effects. Without further ado, let's keep cracking on with the Dynamic Link Master Class course. All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Dynamic Link Master Class. We are going to talk about a bit, of, a bit about green screens now. So we've done some advanced tools, right? And the advanced tools definitely don't stop with the rotoscope brush, the rotoscope tool, the rotoscope effect all valid names for what we just did in the previous episode. I think it's a really nice execution. And if you can just mix in a little bit of Roto Brush into normal scenes, look at that. We only use the Roto Brush for two seconds and instantly it makes just a more interesting scene that, you know, transforms into the real life equivalent and then has this crazy, you know, background behind it. And overall, that is really not the hardest thing in the world to do, but it looks pretty cool. Now, we're going to break down green screen. So I've got this green screen right here. And it is me testing out the green screen to make sure it was all working before a client came over and we filmed some stuff. And I want to show you guys the drastic difference between the green screen effect uh, and the chroma key in Premiere Pro compared to the tools available to you in After Effects. And this will be continuing on our kind of uh, advanced tools, uh, you know, line of thinking, if you will, that we're, that we're trying to demonstrate that After Effects clearly has some stuff that's far superior to Premiere Pro, but let's drag and drop COO02, and let's actually double click it, load it up here, and we can see we've got a got a decent clip, I, I sit down and everything, I'll probably press I, which is in, and I'll create that in point right there, I'll drag and drop that down here, mute the layer, you know, we, we don't need any audio attached, it is what it is, and it's pretty much just me looking around, right? Over, awesome. So over the course of, of five seconds, five and a half seconds, I pretty much just look around, we can go ahead and shop the clip right there. And, you know, basically, it is not an ideal green screen. My green screen had been set to the side for a little while. I didn't have a chance to iron it. It was pretty, you know, wrinkled up and stuff like that, which could be a problem, could be not, depending on, A, what software you're using, and also how, you know, experienced you are with green screens. So without further ado, let's get started. What I'd want to do in Premiere Pro, the, the actual process of actually getting rid of the green screen, would be to go over here to Effects and type in key key is key light aka chroma key aka uh ultra key whatever the case may be and you've got a whole bunch of different options here now one of the ones that most people go to right away is color key i'm going to drag and drop that over here and go over to effects and we have a color key and we can clearly select a color now color key as you see really doesn't do a whole lot because the tolerance hasn't been turned up by default. So what we could do is we can select a, a green, which we think is, is more or less there the whole time, and just start bringing that tolerance up. Now, the problem with that is you start eating into um, you. You know what I mean? So to actually get all the green green off the screen, I have to eat into my face a little bit, as you see. Like, that's not... That right there is not a, uh, a sideburn turned mini beard at the bottom. That's the screen turning to black. It's cutting me off. So... You know, the closest you could really get this is about here, which obviously isn't, isn't good because it's got that, that green attached. Now, Ultra Key is the sort of superior one. As you have a look right there, um, all we've done is select a green, and it's removed everything. However, of course, we could still see the wrinkles because the wrinkles are, of course, still, you know, part of it, and it hasn't necessarily 
you know, taking it away. Now, there's a couple things like the spill suppression and stuff like that, which um, you can you can kind of mess around with. But that's that is a little bit less less relevant. Um, but you can mess with uh, with some of this stuff to to get it gone. However, it doesn't really give you the most um, ability to to to, to really um, polish stuff. I think that's the word I'm looking for, right? Polish stuff. However. In Adobe After Effects, you can polish stuff really, really nicely, and that's 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 an absolute fact. As you can see right here, we've toned it down a little bit, but you know, if we zoom in right a hundred and and go over here, it's got these messed up little things on the side. It's eating into our character, aka me, and that's not what we're looking for. So let's remove Ultra Key. We've concluded that the key light effects in Premiere Pro are, you know, not great essentially. They are okay if we're dealing with an entirely flat one color, but because we're dealing with a live green screen like here with some wrinkles in there, it's not a perfect seamless green screen, which means it's it's going to need a, a not perfect seamless effect to done to it. So let's right click it. Um, uh, let's actually roll over here. I'm probably going to zoom in a little bit so I can right click it more effectively and go to replace with After Effects composition. And let's let After Effects load itself up. Let's let it do its thing import everything and just like that we can mute the layer we can actually go ahead and press space and just play it and it's just me looking around everything's looking pretty cool however this over here which is already preloaded but I'll, I'll remove it and retype it for the for the purposes of it if you go to effects and presets and type in key light this is key light 1.2 the ultimate kind of green screen effect that if we drag and drop that and get our 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 you know our, our pen tool our color dropper if you will and click Instantly, it's going to remove everything. However, as you see, there is a significant, you know, stuff going on in the background. But what we would do to actually get that gone is mess with the screen grain. And as you see right there, all I've done is taken 100 to maybe 140 or 150. And just like that, we have completely removed the background perfectly. And if I zoom in, there is a little bit of fuzz going on right there. But it is overall no way in comparison anywhere near as bad as... Uh, you know, the Premiere Pro one. And if we actually turn the, the background to alpha, as you see right there, it is pretty well done. It's pretty nice. And by the way, I'll show you an extremely quick fix where it, it is a bit see-through here, right? We, we, we can't deny it. It is a bit see-through here. You know, there's a little bit of transparency going on, clearly because of some spill. Now, what we can actually do is just press Control-Shift-D uh, or Control-D rather and duplicate the layer. And what this does is instantly solve that. Now, if one duplication doesn't do it, duplicate it again. Now, in this case, I'll press Control, uh, you know, Z to undo that because two duplications or one duplication, just two simple layers, has completely fixed the kind of see-through transparent shoulder effect that we had going on right there. And just like that, we have used an advanced tool, another advanced tool, which is the Key Light 1.2 in Adobe After Effects to actually, you know, get the most out of this green screen. This green screen was far inferior compared to what our After Effects equivalent has turned into. And... Also, what you've got is the advanced spill suppression. Advanced spill suppression is not that relevant to this particular clip right here. However, um, if, for example, we had actually used the, the normal green screen effect over here and it had all that green around the edges, we could use the advanced spill to, to take off that spill. You know, it's, it's in the title. The green is spilling out and the advanced spill remover would, would tone all that down. However, the green screen gain was able to do that. We're able to, you know, to turn that up to, to 150 and completely get rid of the background. We can obviously have it as a transparent background or with a black screen, or, you know, we, we could straight up repeat the, the same thing. We could go down here, right? And we could actually go over here to, uh, to, um, the, you know, this particular effect here, double click it and copy paste the orange solid at the bottom and literally just come over here, press control V, which, you know, pastes it. And just like that, we have a, uh, you know, me right here in front of it. And look at that. If we actually zoom in, there is a little bit of spill. So I think we could potentially use this this time to um, to remove a bit of that spill and and, and see what's happening. But um, I'm actually just going to control shift, uh, control Z and, uh, and delete that. And actually just leave that how it is. But that right there is the advanced green screen effect. Thank you guys for jumping in on this particular episode right here. We're going to keep cracking with more advanced tools available to you using dynamic link we build everything in premiere as we're seeing we'll press Control s we'll save this we'll come back over here we've built everything in premiere but we have enhanced everything in adobe after effects which is only available using dynamic link
All right, guys, welcome back to the Dynamic Link Master Class. We are going to be finalizing the effects section, if you will, explaining and breaking down sort of the third and final, or maybe not the third and final, but definitely the third uh, advanced tool. Now, we're going to be exploring the masking tool. We're going to be taking this particular clip right here, and we're going to be exploring and putting ourselves in another hypothetical situation, right? That's my, my main you know, demonstration so far has been just hypothetical situations, whether it been the review videos, whatever the case may be. And if you guys go to resources, you could download this clip right here. And we're going to be breaking down a hypothetical situation of as if we are, you know, uh, you know, designers or whatever, and we've been hired by a club to create some promo graphics for their new event that's coming out. And we're actually going to isolate this particular poster on the wall, duplicate it a couple times, and then do a couple of cool things in the background to uh, overall just make this a pretty cool graphic. So let's actually drag and drop this into Premiere, right? And what I'm going to do is drag and drop that here. Let it import itself. Drag and drop it further down here to create an actual brand new sequence. And I'm going to first do the actual chops and cuts in Premiere as per usual. And I want to highlight the bit of the video that we're actually going to be using. So we're going to be using that to probably starting, starting like there, right? So it's not, it's not very long. Overall, this is a... How long is this? Like a two second, two second piece, right? However, once we've actually created it and isolated it, duplicated it a couple times and also done a couple different, you know, reverses or whatever the case may be, we're going to create, you know, a good five to 10 second graphic out of this. And, uh, you know, it's going to entirely transform. So first off, let us actually go ahead and right click, go up here to replace with After Effects composition. And we're actually going to let After Effects load itself up. And what we're going to be exploring is the advanced tool in terms of the pen tool. The pen tool in After Effects is more advanced than Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro, great. By all means, 100%. And you can come over here and get the pen tool. And, you know, we could, you know, technically highlight this on its own and, and then, you know, move over a little bit and, and, and adjust and everything like that. And, and it's doable. Do not get me wrong. In fact, it's 100% doable, but it's just more accurate. And I mean, I don't actually think about it. I don't know if it's necessarily more accurate as it's just more comfortable over in Adobe After Effects. And, uh, you know, I'm actually going to load that up here. I'm going to get the pen tool, the After Effects pen tool. And uh, I'm literally just going to start drawing a loose outline around this particular poster. And we're trying to, uh, to highlight it. Now, we can fix the actual outline later. As you see right, right there, we probably can bring that in a little bit more. Up here, probably could bring that in a little bit more. Up here, bring it in a bit more. But that loose, you know, outline is just to uh, get the points made and then we can adjust them going forward. And just like that, if we press M, we're going to get the mask up and we want to turn on the mask position. And basically what we want to do is just go over like two frames and uh, start to start to basically customize this. And we actually want to open up the mask so we can we can get the individual points um, just like that. And, and we can actually adjust it bit by bit. So we're going to want to pull those up. I always pull them out a bit just to see what I'm dealing with. And then I can, uh, you know, sort of line stuff up a little bit more accurately. But basically, we want to keep going over a couple frames and just adjusting this outline until we have the course of the two seconds fully selected. You can't see anything else going on around it. And you are just dealing with what is, you know, uh, the target, aka the subject of what we're trying to do, which is this poster right here. We're trying to get the poster on its own, so you don't even necessarily can't really tell that it's part of sort of a, a larger sequence around it. And you know, two two frames at a time. Some stuff that moves a little quicker, you'd have to go frame by frame. But this is moving a little bit slow, as it's in four times slow motion, 120 frames a second. So we can we can do two frames at a time. As you see, I'm just pulling over one, pulling over a second one, and then I'm literally just adjusting stuff. And with a shape like this, which is only, you know, a square or a rectangle, um, yeah, rectangle, you don't, you know, the precision isn't as necessary. So right here, I'm, I'm doing roughly what I assume is, is the edges. In fact, I'm going in a little bit, bit so, so we just definitely have a fully highlighted uh, poster. But if this was not a rectangle, not such a basic, you know, rudimentary shape, we would have to be you know, doing a, a much more complex mask and the masks would be different. They even have curves in there, whatever the case may be. So the simpler the shape that you're actually masking, the quicker the process. You know, I, I feel as though that is a relatively self-explanatory point, but it's very true 
if you are masking some, you know, some next level stuff, you are going to be uh, taking a lot more time. And that's why the rotoscoping tool oftentimes for the more advanced stuff is a better use of advanced tool to jump to because of the simple fact that it, you know, relies on AI where masking, it's not going to figure out anything we don't tell it to figure out, right? Like it's not going to start finding edges and, and start doing the mask for us. You know, I wish it would, but it's just not the way the tool is built. It's, it's built to be a manual tool, a manual kind of crop and, and highlight tool. Now the rotoscope is built to be a AI, right? Um, sort of computer assisted, which means that it actually, you know, you, you sort of, you draw a rough outline as we did earlier, right? If we go back uh, here, we drew a rough outline and it just cracked on and figured everything else out by itself. And that right there is an extremely advanced tool. The, you know, that's not even available in Premiere. You have to use either After Effects or dynamic link between Premiere and After Effects to, you know, to even have access to something like that. However, we do have access to something like this, which is the, the masking tool. And we could as well be doing this in Premiere. Like I said, just personally within, you know, the five years I've been using these two programs or Premiere, I've actually been using for less, maybe like two or three years, but After Effects I've been using for a good five years. And in that time, I've, I've definitely, you know, figured out what is quicker in one program or what's quicker in the other program. And, uh, you know, this is 100% more comfortable, quicker. If you're doing something more comfortable, you know, you're doing something quicker, usually, you know, it's oftentimes it seems logically sound to assume that. So it makes sense that we want to, you know, bring this over to, uh, to After Effects. And if we press Control S, save, this is affecting it live, right? So as you see right there. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's nice and, and highlighted and, and we're going over two by two. I'm actually going to bring this here. And what I'm actually going to do is do some pretty cool animation to this next. But actually what I want to, what I want to do is, is probably, there we go. Adjust those two at the top as well. I don't think I adjusted those two at the top. So you got to make sure you're remembering to, uh, to keep all points adjusted. Of course, you know, easier said than done. But if you do mess up one of the points, you have to go all the way back and redo everything. However, um, all you really have to do is change a couple points. So it's not the it's not the end of the world if it does happen. But our shape is starting to take form. We are gonna actually complete this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna speed up a little bit, and we're actually gonna highlight this for the full course of two seconds. At the end of the day, it is only two seconds. So I think it seems seems useful to do that. But you see how. To highlight a two-second clip right here and, and to analyze, uh, to actually isolate it rather, we're talking about 10 minutes worth of worth of masking, right? So if you're trying to mask out, you know, something that's, God forbid, an hour long or 30 plus minutes or something, you're going to be dealing with a significant, you know, headache. And believe me, I, I know this stuff firsthand. I, you know, I'm a freelancer. So for, for projects that I'm getting paid for, I'll obviously be going that, that extra mile and doing some advanced stuff with with in terms of masking or whatever the case may be, and especially for intro sequences, doing something with the masking is always cool, whether it be a, you know, a, a rapper for a music video walking in front of text or something. And, uh, you know, this stuff takes quite a while when you're doing it in a, in a live scene, because this right here, for the purposes of a simple demonstration, I'm using a very rudimentary shape here, this basic, you know, uh, poster, but, you know, real life shapes that, that you're usually masking in a, in a music video or a client project, is almost certainly going to be more advanced than this, you know, single four-sided shape right here, right? So I think count your blessings that we're doing something relatively simple for a um, for a demonstration. But, you know, of course, we don't want to overwhelm anybody. And at the end of the day, live explanations, which, by the way, we'll be getting to some live explanations in the very next scene because I want to familiarize you you guys with the uh, advanced mask tool. And then we jump over there to... Uh, to the transition section, which we got coming up next, which is going to be huge because we're going to be breaking down advanced transitions. And these are transitions that I personally use in, you know, almost every, every client project. Masking transitions, crucial. Makes stuff seamless. Overall, it's an extremely nice look. And me, I, I really like seamless stuff. I don't necessarily like the crazy over edits. I'm all about my seamlessness and you know, masking transitions. If you're not familiar with them already, you, you definitely will be. They are an extremely seamless way to uh, to blend scenes together. We're nearly done the mask, and thank God we only got to do one mask, and then we can simply duplicate it and reverse it back on itself as well to uh, to create kind of like this postery type of uh, type of vibe that we got going on. Come over here. The final couple points. 
finally, we have actually done it together. Obviously, you guys have downloaded this clip from resources, so we should be following through everything together right now. You know, if you guys haven't done this with me, I am a little bit disappointed. You know, I've had to go through the the suffering of, of, of adjusting all these points. So I want you guys to as well. It's a, it's a crucial experience. But just like that, we've now highlighted the uh, clip. Now it's a little bit, it's a little bit foggy. It's a little bit shaky in some bits. But if we jump back here, we can see that we have actually highlighted it. And um, oh, what the hell? What happened there? So as we see, loving it. So sometimes there's a little bit of a disconnect from, uh, you know, when you bring it back into Premiere. Um, but of course it fixes itself pretty soon. Um, and just like that, we have actually created a poster. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to, um, put, before I put something in the background, I want to actually just position some stuff a little bit better. So you know how I said I want three different positions, right? I want three different posters, okay? So I want to bring this one over here and have it maybe here. Then I want to bring it up a layer, press uh, hold alt and make it and uh, bring it up a layer just so we can make that bigger. And I actually just want to make this a little bit smaller. And just have a look at, at what it would look like to just reposition this a little bit. All right. So I'm just getting creative with it now. All right. What I want to do is I want to just position that there. See what happens if we move that over a little bit. Nice. So that right there is the current is the current setup and I just want to keep tweaking some stuff. So I want to duplicate that again, bring that over. In fact, you know what? I'm actually going to delete that. I'm going to duplicate the top one, bring that over as well and rotate it again and bring it up a bit. See if I can't have it here or you know what? I'll have it there. Yeah, sure. And now if I go over here, we've got these posters which are coming on and it sort of is looking like the effect I'm going for. Again, guys, I'm going to keep reinforcing the point every chance. Any chance I'm not doing something perfect, that's a chance I'm going to reinforce the point that it will rarely go perfect the first time. More likely, a more replicatable scenario will be that you'll have to do a little bit of a trial and error to get the effect looking precisely how you actually uh, want it. And the bottom layer here I'm thinking should be a little bit smaller let's let's be honest about that it should be smaller a little bit let's bring that over here amazing we've got three different sizes of these particular things but I'm actually going to delete the bottom one and go ahead and reduplicate this one drag it over a little bit and rotate it a bit just trying to have all the sizes actually add up yeah, we can turn that down a little bit more. Bring it over. Throw it like there. And just like that, we've got three posters which are flying on. And now we can also, what we could do is right-click this. Uh, that's actually not even linked, so delete that. Bring these down. Bring these down here. And actually just go ahead and right-click and go to Nest. And we're going to nest these. Then we're going to press Alt, hold Alt rather, and drag over. Duplicate, right click, go to speed duration, go to reverse layer. And now what we've got is posters, which zoom in, zoom back out. And I'm actually going to go ahead and actually uh, duplicate the first layer again so that it comes back in. And we've got this nice sort of GIF type of situation. Then let's actually load up our resources again, guys. You can download Liquify, which will be available. Drag and drop that into our particular sequence, scale it up so that it fills the screen. And just like that, we have the poster, which is animated, and there's some crazy stuff going on in the background. But that is a little bit distracting. A actual live, you know, poster might have, um, might have. Well, first off, we definitely want to go over here to uh to Gaussian, um, and actually just throw a little Gaussian blur on there. So we actually drag and drop that down here, turn that up a nice little bit, repeat the edges, and there is a couple final things that I want to do, um. First off, go here, and you see how we are, at this point, just throwing effects on from each program, right? Whichever program is easier to do the effect, that's where we're going to do it. I'm throwing some drop shadow in here to throw that onto those three, bring it over a bit, copy and paste it to these clips here, or actually, I think I might have to uh, copy, paste, come over here, copy, paste, 
And just like that, we got some drop shadow on them now, which means they're, you know, standing out a little bit more. And I think I... I think I am understanding what needs to be done as well. There needs to be... If we go... Oh, my bad. If we come back over here and go over here, the top one needs to go up a bit. I believe that that is what, what needs to be happening. The top one needs to go up a little bit. And the one over here needs to go up a little bit as well. Actually, I'm just going to press Control Z, undo that, come back over here, have a look. Looking decent. It's looking decent. Nice. I'm happy with that. It's a pretty cool little poster. What we want to do finally, guys, is actually jump back into After Effects and go ahead and uh, finalize this with a, with a title. A title, crucial. Um, a poster's got to have a title. Let's right-click. Let's go to Replace with After Effects Composition. And what we're doing is, again, just to remind you, if you know, you, you lost track, because it has gotten a little bit crazy for sure, is actually go ahead and let's press Control Z. Let's actually undo that real quick. Um, what we want to go ahead and do is come back to Premiere. Have a look here. Press Control Z. Undo that. We want to right-click the bottom layer. My bad. That was, that was an accident of mine. Right-click the bottom layer. Press... Replace with After Effects Composition, just the bottom layer, not the actual top layers. Of course, we're importing stuff that can't be imported. Let's load this one up. And what I want to do is actually go over here and get the infamous rays. CC Light Rays or CC Light Burst 2.5. Drag and drop it here. And bring the strength up a nice bit. Probably a 100, whatever the case may be. Yep. Let's have the have a look at the intensity. Eh. Yeah, bring that down, bring that down. Probably about there. Press Control S. Save that. Just like that, we have a you know an even crazier background right now. And in retrospect, what I'm what I'm thinking right now is to get this to get this looking properly official. I'm thinking that the the ones on the side they're just not fully doing it for me. I'll be honest, guys. I want to bring this to the middle. I want to bring this to the middle. All right, and I want to bring it over here. And of course, these are all duplications, so it's all the same. And we've got this poster that's going in and out. Amazing. And what we can also have is um, potentially, let's have a look, let's have a look, let's have a look. Um, we're going to want some text on here for sure, but I'm just seeing live where to actually insert it. Maybe it would go good here. Let's have a look. Yeah, so I'm thinking maybe, maybe on the side could be good. Yeah, that's looking good right there. That's looking good. And then we can actually go ahead and have a look. Awesome. So we'd want some text over here and we want to say CASA. I'm literally just trying to simulate a uh, a live promo graphic for, for an event that would be going down. CASA. Let's have a look how far. Oh, yeah, there we go. CASA. CASA. Presents, amazing. Casa presents. Let's scale that down a little bit. Nice. Casa presents, and duplicate that as well. Go ahead and and type. Uh, I'm in. Oh, big DJ night. I'm I'm just gonna get funny with it now, basically. I was going to call this Big DJ Night. So, Casa presents Big DJ Night. Amazing. Casa presents Big DJ Night. Phenomenal. That right there is a poster for an event, for a, you know, a nightclub, whatever the case may be. Um, what we might want to actually do is, uh, is go ahead and copy that. Put it on the same text layer so that it is, oh, bring that over here. Boom. Big DJ Knight. Amazing. What we're going to just highlight that. What we're also going to do is uh, is just make it a little bit smaller, I think. Big DJ Knight. Phenomenal. There we go. Casa presents Big DJ Knight. And what we can do to finalize it is right-click, go here, replace with After Effects Composition, and... We are actually just going to throw the simplest of simple touches onto it because I think after we've done all this, all it needs is a nice little simple 
touch. And that simple touch would be some wiggle. Some wiggle position, drag and drop it, make the wiggle amount 20, all right? Press Control S, save it, come back over to Premiere Pro. And what we're gonna wanna do is actually get some drop shadow, drag and drop that onto the text itself because sometimes when you throw effects on there, they they remove other effects. Press Control Shift C, Control Shift V, or Control C, Control V to duplicate, uh, to, to copy, Control Shift, Control V. Again, to duplicate it, just to uh, enhance that a bit more. And just like that, Casa presents Big DJ Night. That right there is an absolutely killer graphic that we've created in the course of maybe 10, 20 minutes, whatever the case may be. It took a couple twists and turns, but overall, I'm very pleased with how this ended up. That right there is the product of Dynamic Link. We've combined Premiere Pro and After Effects to create a badass graphic for a potential club night just like this. Welcome back to the Dynamic Link Masterclass, guys. We are entering the transition section now. We're gonna be doing how to do advanced masking transitions. So we did a little bit of masking here at the end where we uh, we masked something out, but this is definitely not a transition. But we created a pretty cool graphic right here, sort of simulating the idea that we're working for a, you know, a, an event company or a client trying to do a promo poster. Um, and it turned out really nice. Now this time we're gonna have a clip of a restaurant logo. And we're gonna be trying to create a transition where the, the logo is on the screen for a second and then we actually zoom in through the logo into another clip and we actually uh, can conveniently use this clip again of me sort of reacting crazy and we'll, we'll, we'll sort of try and line it up so it uh you know so it works pretty well so without further ado let's do that now what we're going to do first is import COO 100 which is uh, the clip that we're going to be doing the transition to into Premiere and create a sequence out of it and it's a very short clip it's only like just under three seconds all right and what we're gonna do is the idea is to pretty much create it so that it's on screen for about a second, maybe maybe a second and a half, and then all of a sudden it zooms through the the logo. The logo kind of disappears, almost hollows out, and it zooms straight straight through into a into another clip. And the other clip, like we said, is gonna be the uh, the reaction face sort of clip, which I think we'll be able to get working pretty nicely. And instead of using the mask tool inside Premiere, which is just a little bit more fiddly in my experience, what we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to go to replace with After Effects Composition because that's going to give us the ability to use the, as we've already demonstrated, that just a little bit easier to use and more comfortable to use pen tool over here in, of course, After Effects. And what we're going to do is make sure we're selecting our layer and we're actually just going to go ahead and let it play for a second and maybe play to... Maybe play to about to about here, and maybe over the course of then less than a less than a less than a second. What we want to we what we want to happen is is the clip just shoot in, just boom straight in. So I think leave it on for for two seconds, two seconds, and then what we'll do is we'll actually go ahead and draw a a mask, and we're just gonna mask out, and we just draw a square around this. Now, luckily, this is a pretty nice pretty nice shape because it is a relatively basic. It's not a perfect square, but it's relatively basic, which means we're not gonna have the hardest time chopping it out. Um, but what we wanna do is go ahead and actually invert it, which means we're gonna be going through the side of it. And we can even, we can even add a, uh, a, slight, a slight feather to it as well. We can actually press Control D, delete, uh, du duplicate it, go here and actually delete the mask off the bottom layer. Because what we want is to be able to turn off this bottom layer. We want to be able to turn it off as we go through, or actually use a transition on it, which is what we're which is what we're going to be doing. Trying to use some sort of transition, whether it be a um, a you know sort of cross dissolve, probably something that's a little bit more sharp, something that can wipe it out, right? But overall, here we are. We've got our two layers. One of them has been has been masked out. However, the mask starts at two seconds right here. And what we can actually do is turn on the mask path. And what we're gonna do is go frame by frame. So let's actually hold control and, and then go over one using the uh, using the, 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 the arrow keys. And what we're gonna do is actually just go ahead and select this particular mask and just adjust it as we, as we go. So we're gonna adjust it a little bit and we're gonna go frame by frame until we've sort of masked the entire path and more or less tracked the entire path of the logo. And we're just going frame by frame, 
slightly adjust things, make sure the mask is fully covering the section that we obviously want to do this transition. It is ideal to get everything looking as sharp as we can right off the bat. If you don't get things absolutely perfect, it's no worries. You can come back and fix stuff. However, of course, it's more ideal to uh, to get everything sorted right off the bat so that, you know, so that you don't have to be doing any fiddly stuff later on. But overall, I'm just, just going frame by frame. That's pretty much the science of it. Frame by frame, adjusting the mask, making sure that everything's covered and we can, uh, you know, nice you know, nice and seamlessly do this transition. That's really the effect is taking this and making it, you know, happen so quick that the viewer doesn't necessarily have time to process what's happened. So it just looks nice and seamless. They don't necessarily know what we've done here. And that is a perfect masking transition is something that looks seamless, something that is, you know, not uh, invading the viewer's sort of... Um, uh, not ruining their experience, if you will, because at the end of the day, the viewer should, in theory, be watching something that's, uh, you know, that, that, that kind of flows into each other, and they, they shouldn't necessarily be totally aware they're watching a video. They should just be enjoying what they're, you know, what they're watching, and that seamless effect definitely helps out with that for sure, but it can be a little bit tedious, <laughs> frame, frame by frame, as you see right here, and we're just doing it. And of course, we haven't even done any zooms yet or anything. We just want to actually do the entire mask path. And then we're, we're going to be able to zoom in later on. But let's just make sure everything is uh, is highlighted. And we can, uh, we can go two frames at a time at this point because it's not really moving a whole lot, to be honest. Going frame by frame might have been a little bit overkill. But that is the nature of, uh, of, of, these, of these transitions right here is it could be a little bit of a little bit time consuming. Which is why, you know, usually you do it over the course of a short period of time, which is exactly what we are doing. We have done it over the course of probably about 11 milliseconds. We'll keep going over a little bit until maybe, until maybe 20. So more or less half a second. And this effect will happen over a half or, or a third of a second. Which I think will be a decent amount of time. To, uh, to to not only not be able to fully tell what's happened, but also to be able to appreciate what's happened. That's that's the fine line, to, to be honest. That's definitely the fine line, is you want to be able to see what's happened, you want to be able to see the effect, but you don't want to make, you know, you don't want it to look rough. I think, uh, I think that's definitely the best way to put it. But that right there concludes the mask right there. So we have this portion right here, which is masked out. And the mask moves around a fair bit, that's for sure. So what we can actually do is... Maybe delete every, every other, every other one, and just see what we're looking at here. So that should should be all right over the course of a couple seconds. And what we're gonna do now is actually just turn this back on, and we'll be able to transition this out. So we want to transition it out as this comes through. So what we're gonna do is uh, have this on full actually, and what we can actually go ahead and do is have a look at some transitions down here and maybe a radial wipe is honestly what I was thinking. I was thinking a radial wipe could work out. However, a radial wipe with a fair bit of feather because that looked way too rough, but a radial wipe like that could be good if it wiped out just before it zoomed in potentially, or ideally what's probably going to be cleaner is just going to be a, uh, a straight radial wipe. And that's the reality of the situation. It can swipe out real quick. So what we'll do is we'll turn on the, uh, the linear wipe, right? And we'll actually go over a couple frames and we'll actually have that um, maybe over the course of there. Fully complete. So it goes, it, boom, slides, slides open, slides open and shoots in, which is what we're going to do now. So it slides open and now it actually, what we're going to do is press S turn on the scale keyframe and we're actually just going to go ahead and uh and have a look at that mask see how many see how many it does and just like that we're going to go over and we will complete it press s and just zoom in zoom in and just like that we have fully zoomed in and we should have created the zoom in part so now, if we actually come to the beginning, we press Control-S to obviously save what we've done, and then press Space to actually play. 
So just like that, it plays and then zooms straight in. And however, what we've, what we've forgotten to do is copy and paste the, the scale attributes to the clip below as well. <laughs> there we go, of course. Now that, that sorted itself out. And that's looking like it happens a little bit too quick. Too, uh, too quick. So here comes the tweaking part, guys. As per usual, it's uh, it, it happens to the best of us. Now we come down here, find the linear wipe, and I'm actually just going to go ahead and have that happen a little bit slower. All right, because I think it happens a little bit too quick here. What it's saying is there's maybe there we go. So what we've got is the clip zooming in. Nice, but what I'm thinking is the uh, the scales of both of these are happening a little bit too slow as well. They should be done. So just like that, maybe. There we go. Probably like this. Not too shabby. And of course, I'm going to tweak this one down here a little bit. Uh, again, getting everything perfect is kind of a secret science. But we've got it done. There we go. And now we've got an effect which happens pretty quickly, but is definitely is definitely a decent execution. I think what we need to do is uh, is just turn a position keyframe on for both of these as well, actually. Position, and uh, just come over here a little bit. You see where the screen is fully gone? We could pull these ones over a little bit, as you see right here, because then on, on the next one, they're, they're gone. Let's have a look. There we go. Okay, cool. So it just needed a little bit of position so it can get off the screen pretty pretty quick, basically. And what I might even do is come down here and just have a look at the at the actual linear wipe. Bring this over here. And maybe have it come off a little bit before. Yeah, so I think what I'm going to have to do is have the, the linear wipe come off. Boom. And then come through. So you can kind of see what's happened, and then it zooms in. And just like that, we've done it. Press Control S to save. If we come back here now, we will actually have a layer which appears. And just like that, it zooms in. And what we can do now is get a clip and actually go ahead and put it under it, which we already have our clip lined up. However, I just want to do a little bit more tweaking here. See, it is it is a fine a fine kind of line to, to get stuff looking really nice. And there you go. That's probably the one right there. So we go back, we play it. There we go. Looking decent now. So it scans off, zooms through. Wonderful. And just like that, what we can actually go ahead and do is come over here, get our COO89, which actually might already be in here. It is right, right here it is. Um, oh, no, that, that's actually the wrong one. My bad. COO04. That's the one. We'll drag and drop that here. And go ahead and bring it, uh, or actually double-click it, open it in our, our viewer over here. And what we're going to do is literally just come to the beginning of that action, press I to do an endpoint, and come over here and actually start it from the beginning for sure. And what we can do is we can actually uh, scale it in so that it is there to start with scale and then scale there as well and then it's <laughs> then it just starts scaling up dramatically and there we go and all we do is we just scale that up a bit more and scale that up a bit more and just like that we've got it and now we play this okay and now it just needs to be uh, adjusted a little bit So right here we should probably be we should probably be the start of it, I'd imagine. So we can come over here. And you see what I mean, guys? It's really just a whole bunch of fiddling. And just like that, it looks like we've uh, we've nailed it. So we're gonna press spacebar to play it. And just like that, we've created a transition using the advanced masking tool. It cuts off the screen, zooms straight through. And just like that, we have actually created a masking transition this is it of course slow down the screen disappears and it flies right through screen disappears 
flies straight through. And that right there is the advanced masking transition using Dynamic Link. All right, guys, welcome back to the Dynamic Link Master Class. We are continuing in the transition section. We're going to be doing the rotoscope tool actually to create an advanced transition. So pretty much we went through this, right? This right here is a advanced masking transition. We took the masking tool, aka, you know, the pen tool. Uh, masking is really the effect. The pen tool is, uh, is the actual name of the specific tool in question. And we were able to create this. Now, we blended it with another scene, of course, of me acting to... To, to sort of have a, an expression that would make sense if we just flown through this logo right here. But essentially what we did was we isolated the, the logo, then we, you know, used a transition on it, and then, of course, just, just uh, you know, scaled it in, which was, uh, which was very cool indeed. Now what we're going to be doing is sort of similar, but instead of having to actually manually select the shape, we're actually going to be using the rotoscope tool, which we messed around a bit before, to actually just artificially grab that shape for us and save us a bit of time. So let's actually go ahead and explore the process of doing that. And I've actually got another clip from Rotodam. So, of course, we already checked out this clip from Rotodam, right? Um, and we may be using this as the clip to transition into. I'm thinking it probably is a decent clip to transition into because of the movement. But the actual updated clip is the... I'm, I'm literally scanning around to have a look. There it is, C072 or 172. So it's a little bit dark, so I couldn't see it for a second. But essentially, it is me filming my friend Vedette, and we're at the zoo in Rotterdam, and he is uh, just holding up his camera to this penguin right here. And what I want to do is I want to actually zoom into the screen. So I want to highlight that screen, and when the camera's already zooming in, which is great because we already have a, a forward motion, we want to zoom straight into that screen right there and actually transition into another clip. So easier said than done, but it's definitely doable and very doable with dynamic link. So let's drag and drop this into Premiere. Again, let's actually uh, double click this, open it up over here and wait until the actual movement starts happening. So about there, I'm going to press I, which is the end point. Keep playing that. And uh, we've obviously isolated a, a decent bit of the clip. In fact, I may even just go to uh, about there. And that'll be where we actually start from. So we start relatively already into it. I'm going to drag and drop this down here to the new sequence button. Go ahead and let this load up. I'm just going to literally press play just to have a look again what I'm looking at. Right click it. And let's go straight into After Effects. No messing around. No time wasting. I'm going to right click that and, uh, and have this load up a brand new composition. Now, actually what I want to do is real quickly just organize some stuff. Because I've realized over here... What we've done is we've let After Effects get a little bit crazy. So real quick, let me just make a folder called uh, Footage. Another folder called uh, Comps. All right, so we got a fo footage called Folder. Uh, a footage, a footage called Folder. A folder called Footage and a, uh, a folder called Comps. And now what I want to do is I want to drag them out of each other. I, I don't want that to be in there. But for some reason, it's not letting me. That's no problem. I will drag this out here, and then I will actually drag some compositions to comps and then be able to drag that out and I'm just highlighting these drag them over here to comps get this stuff right here throw that uh, throw that just I'll just leave that actually so now, now we've got two two kind of folders where we've got footage and compositions awesome a little bit more organized over there all right that was that was spinning me out a little bit all right but here we are let's press spacebar play it we've got our our composition nice and set up. Now, first, what I want to do is I want to actually go over here um, and actually just type in a uh, brightness. I want to get a little bit of brightness and just brighten up our our scene just so I can see it a little bit more. Right? This will this will make a little bit of a you know it'll just make it a little bit easier because we can actually see what we're doing. And now, what I want to do is I actually just want to scroll over and I want to actually go ahead probably or decide where I'm going to actually do the effect. And I think I'm going to do the effect maybe. Maybe right, like right here, potentially. So maybe it's it's zooming in, it's zooming in, and then all of a sudden, boom, it uh, it takes it. And I think I might even move it back a little bit so that we've got a little bit more to work with. And it kind of, it gets a bit closer. And then we're going to use the rotor brush to select that screen, and uh, and the rest is is gonna is gonna take place. So let's keep give it a play. Maybe maybe around there, maybe around there. Yeah, maybe there. So I'm gonna double click there. And actually, go up, come up here and select the rotor brush tool. And I'm actually just going to zoom in and click. And it should, yep, just like that, select the entire area because it's 
uh, white and the surrounding area is dark, which means it can lock onto the shade, you know, the different color, essentially, and know that that's a different part and it's going to lock onto that. So it uses AI, right? And we're just going to press space bar and it's going to go frame by frame for the course of 10 frames. And it's just going to figure that out. And I think 10 frames will probably be enough, actually. So if we come back, what we can actually have a, have a look at is for 10 frames, as you see, the screen has been has been isolated. However, all we have to do to actually invert that is right click or a drop down menu click, go here, go to Roto Brush, and actually just take invert background. And now we've got this clip where it's on the screen, and then all of a sudden it gets there and it's off the screen for a couple of seconds, right? So or or there is a there's something that we can essentially zoom into, right? So right there, hypothetically, if we were just to you know zoom in a whole bunch and and and, and drag it up right here, we 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 would just zoom straight in. But I'm just going to press Control Z, Control Z again, Control Z again. Come over here, and we've essentially got this the course of 10 seconds, I think. So that's how how quick the the transition is going to happen. In fact, it's going to happen a lot quicker than that. I'll be honest. Um, what I want to do is just do the zoom real quick. So let's come here to the first frame that it's gone. Let's press a scale keyframe. Press P, get the position keyframe. Go ahead and also um, do the drop down menu, come to transform and actually let's go ahead and tick this little box right here, which is turn on 3D layer. Um, and actually, you know what I'm actually gonna do with that? I'm actually just, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna turn that off actually. I'm just gonna have position and scale. The actual 3D layer will be for the, the clip that we want underneath it to transition in because we wanna give it a little bit more of a, a real effect. So now what we wanna do is just go over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten frames, that's what we'll do. We'll actually zoom in right now and what we're doing is we're just literally zooming in until we are in the middle of this screen right here. You see, the closer we get, the less precise it looks. And we more or less just want to zoom straight into this screen so that we're in the middle. We can't see any of the screen around it. So it just has this effect, as you see right there. And ignore what happens afterwards, but it has this effect of, of zooming into the screen. And now we can press Control shift d and delete the end of it so that it pretty much just zooms in. And then that's it, right? It, it zooms in, boom. And what we're going to be able to do going forward as well is, is get us a little bit closer to the action in a second. And what we can actually do is just like that, zoom straight in. Awesome. So what we could even do is, is maybe have this, maybe have this like there, like maybe, uh, maybe 150. Maybe just, just to keep up with the movement. We go to 100 and it's zooming in and then boom. Zooms in to 100, and maybe the the position here is, of course, normal, but at 50, it is maybe like that. Just so we have a, a little bit easier of a pattern of a flight pan. God, what, what's happened there? Um, I, I see what's happened. All right, cool. Yep. Boom. Looking decent, looking decent. I am, uh, I'm overall pretty happy with it. So I'm gonna press Control S, just save that. And of course, what we've done is is instantly gonna start taking effect over here in uh, Premiere Pro. However, of course, we haven't even we haven't even done too uh, nothing too crazy yet. All we've done is is just isolate the shape and uh, and, and be able to get rid of the screen, and then of course zoom in real quick so that you know every, every, everything essentially happens real quick. Um, now what we want to do. Is I'm just gonna I was just trying something quick. Is actually we go ahead and get a clip to actually you know fit in here, right? And the clip I'm gonna use is gonna be that that C O O twenty seven, right? That same exact uh, that same exact clip, and I'm gonna import it directly into After Effects actually, because After Effects is gonna give us a couple advanced uh, abilities, right? Which is something that I showed you a tiny bit, but it's the 3D layer, right? So let's drag and drop the C O O twenty seven into Adobe After Effects, and let's actually drag and drop it to the bottom of this clip right here. Let's drag it here. Let's actually just drag it over until we find uh, a position where the movement essentially has started, which is about there. I'm going to press Control Shift D, chop that out, and more or less, that is where we want it to come in on. Okay. However, everything from here, which it should be small. To here, a lot happens in these 10 frames. So we have to animate this. 
believable, right? So first off, what I want to do is I actually want to go ahead and press P, um, or I want to go ahead and press S rather, put the scale on, press P, put the position on, and then actually open up and put the ori orientation on. After we click the 3D layer, go to transform and actually tick the orient um, yeah, orientation on. What that is going to do is track advanced 3D, three-dimensional rotations essentially. And now what we do is we go frame by frame. So I've just gone over back one frame and instantly the camera has started to appear itself as we could see right there. Um, and it's looking like what I want to do is maybe end, end on a frame that's a little bit bigger so that when we go back one and what this is right now is a live demonstration um, of me more or less just just try to piece together in my mind how I'm accurately gonna do this effect right now um, and I'm gonna go over and actually just go here bring all these here and like I said maybe it ends a little bit bigger so that when we actually come back we have a little bit of room to to work with as you see here so I, yeah I, I think it should end like that comes over comes over it's a bit smaller comes over it's a bit it's a bit smaller and this is all the sizing stuff guys and then as you see right here I'm able to bring it in a bit more and also rotate it a bit and then here we go we can bring it in a bit and rotate it a bit more you see I'm, I'm really just trying to make it look as accurate as possible that's more or less always the goal here is can we make it look accurate and you see now what I'm gonna need to do is probably turn it over like that and bring it here and then start scaling it up as well see we're trying to make it fit properly as you see so does this fit what, what when we go over um, it looks looks like it got it got so big that it has to stay that big as you see right here so what we're gonna do is just scale that up a little bit and bring the rotation back around amazing bring the rotation back around the scale rotation back around and that is that is I guess how how we'd have to frame it up you see so so you do have to sort of make a couple adjustments and you know sometimes you have to sacrifice a little bit of footage to fix it uh, to, to get everything looking looking right now again it depends what shape you're working with all right I, f I feel definitely the need to, to say that because again in the previous you know kind of section where we were just using some masking we're using a very basic shape right so it just didn't necessarily have the most you know kind of crazy twists and turns to it Whereas a shape like this, it's it's sort of a square, but it's, it's definitely not as well. Um, so it's a little bit different, and uh, it's definitely a little bit more fiddly. Basically, the the sort of general rule to follow is the more advanced the shape, the more advanced the uh, the mask or the or the area that you're trying to um, pretty much single out. Especially if you're trying to make another clip which was not shot with the same motion or anything bl blend into it, you are definitely going to be running into a a problem or two. At the very least but they're always fixable and it's literally just a, a matter of trial and error right so I hope that my less than 100% perfect execution of a lot of these effects has definitely you know contributed in a learning a sense of learning to you but what's uh let's actually just keep keep pushing this over bit by bit and it looks like that should be that should be it so we can now come over here and go to fit I actually just press spacebar to play and just like that, we have a clip which comes on, gets super big, and then somehow gets smaller. Um, <laughs> that is something I'm just going to go ahead and change real quick. And it looks like once the once the the scale comes up, it should not come back down. 
And just like that, we have a clip which shoots in. The only thing to do now is actually just go ahead and transition out of the actual screen that's still on the screen, right? The, the remnants of the screen, if you will. So what we can actually do right there is go ahead and bring it a couple frames before, maybe like right about there. Double click it. Go ahead and highlight it. Go over a few more frames. And we're just going to make up for this uh, for this dead time right here. We're actually just going to highlight that space right there. And it looks like it just has done that. Amazing. Amazing. So, so we've got a little bit more space now. We're just going to press Control Shift D or Control D rather to duplicate it. Open this up down here. Come over here and actually just go ahead and have a look and take off the roto brush, which means that it's there. So then what we can do is actually come over here and just go ahead and type linear. Go ahead and grab a linear wipe. Go ahead and bring that over here. And we can actually just go ahead and by the time the clip hits, we want to have it on a 100% completion. And as soon as it has not, it is off. So as you see right there, what happens is we need to go ahead and transition out. So what happens is it transitions out. We just need to make a transition out over the course of less time or over the course of more time so that it's, uh, it's more apparent as you see right here. So it's gone in, in one at the moment. We need to uh, keep moving it out a little bit so that it's gone a little bit less, a little bit slower. But it looks like linear wipes not going to be the one for us today. I think the one for us today is going to be, is going to be the actual manual, manual mask. And what we're going to do is actually we go up here to the pen tool, click here, click here, click here, click here, click here. So we've highlighted it. Amazing, right? Awesome. What we're now going to want to do is actually just go ahead and introvert it so that essentially it is on the screen right now but what we can do is come here go to mask go to mask path and then come a few frames over and just go ahead and move it off so boom you've got this boom and what we then need to do as well is go ahead and keep the clip on the screen as well so essentially what we've got is the clip zooms off the screen and then zooms in. And just like that, that right there is a advanced transition using the rotoscope effect. And by the looks of it right there, it's looking like I need to, uh, to come back over and, um, and fix this right here, but that's no problem at all. Come here, come here. Right. I totally see what's happened. Boom. And the, it should not be there. And just like that, we fixed it. Amazing. So there's a couple different tweaks, right? Happens to the best of us. But just like that, we've created a nice little transition. And uh, there's a couple things I want to do real quick, guys, to finalize it. And uh, those things are going to be actually just to, uh, to go ahead and get a couple uh, sounds, right? So I'm going to get a couple swish sounds. Um, but what we can actually do is just go ahead and press Control S, save that, load up Premiere Pro, and of course the exact changes will have taken place in Premiere. And now we can do a little bit of sound design in Premiere because that's essentially the name of the game with Dynamic Link. We need to double down on the things that actually, you know, are the you know the strengths of each program. So I'm going to drag and drop both of these sound effects in, and I'm just going to drag and drop them over here. And what I want to do is I want to. Go ahead and first off, let's listen to them. So here, here's number one. And then here's number two. So what I'm thinking is, what I'm thinking is this one is the sound effect for the screen actually disappearing first off. And then as soon as the, the, um, the full blown screen zoom takes place, that's that one. So that, let's have a look. And just like that, it's looked all right. However, of course, they are too prominent. So what we do here, we come over here, we go to minus two, minus 20. Yeah, minus 20. Come to this one right here as well. 
probably go to uh, minus 15. And then we come back over here to the beginning, press spacebar to play. And just like that, we have created a advanced transition. And just like that, it zooms in. And also what we could potentially do is as soon as this starts to zoom in, I'm going to zoom here and and have this oh, have it turned over a bit like that. Let's have a look. Bring that over to the beginning. Zoom in the tiniest bit. Oh, now let's have a look. And just like that, we have a advanced transition using Dynamic Link with Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects. All right, guys, welcome back to the Dynamic Link Masterclass. We're going to be finalizing this section with an exercise. But briefly, here's what we did in the last section. We obviously did the rotoscope uh, advanced transition, which for how quickly we did it turned out turned out pretty nicely. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with it. Now, the kind of progression of that is going to be revisiting the uh, masking transition. Now, this masking transition was a certain type, right? This is entirely you know, transitioning to a, to a new scene through the current one. Now, there's an even smoother, um, a way smoother version of this, and it is actually to use a, a element in the scene or an object in the scene that actually goes past the screen fully, and we can actually use that to essentially have clip A on one side, and once object, you know, C goes across the screen, scene B is on, is on the other side. And uh, without further ado, we're going to be breaking that down, and we're going to be using some clips from the After Effects Masterclass because these are arguably the most perfect example of this effect that I that I possibly have. And if you guys go to the resources, you can download these exact clips. Now let's drag and drop mask transition clip into um, the Premiere Pro. And let's actually just drag and drop that into a new sequence. And let's play this. And more or less, this is a scene where it's it's a line outside of a club. This is a club I filmed last year for New Year's, and this object goes fully across the screen. And the effect that I want to create is, on this side, it is the line, but as soon as the object goes across the screen, we have a whole different object on this particular side. And uh, we're going to be able to create create this effect very nicely in After Effects. And uh, without further ado, let's get to it. So, what do we want to do? We want to right-click this. We want to go to Replace with After Effects Composition, and we want to let After Effects load itself up. It's going to load itself up nice and quick, just like this. It has loaded. Now, what I want to first do is scroll across, and I actually want to find the, the first frame that this appears. And I actually want to go up here to the Pen Tool. I want to get the Pen Tool, and I actually want to go up here, and I want to get a line, and I want to draw it over any of this of this nonsense right here and I want to draw it up here and conclude it and then what I want to do is open this up go to masks and actually introvert it um, introvert <laughs> invert it my bad and also I want to open it and use a little bit of feather right not loads but just something that that you know kind of singes or seals off smoothens if you will the edge then I want to turn on the mask path keyframe and I want to go over to um, even one actually, I want to just go over one and then I simply want to go ahead and adjust these, adjust these points because these points now are inaccurate. We need to adjust them and, uh, and, and make sure that they fully cover the area that we want the transition to happen on. And now I'm literally just going over again, one more frame over and I again proceed to adjust the particular mask right here because that's what we're doing. We're literally just trying to create this area here where our new clip can actually transition. And I'm going over one more frame again, and there will be a point when it starts slowing down that we'll do two frames at a time. However, to start off with, to make sure we're being nice and accurate, we're just going to want to go ahead and, and do it maybe t uh, one frame at a time just to make sure that we don't have to go back and, and do anything. And we also want to make sure that um, if we go back, these are fully covering the corner as well, which they are now. And now we can keep going over. And this is the whole process. So the kind of best masker of the year award goes to the person who has the the kind of toughest stomach who can sit here and just frame by frame it. Of course, the more 
accurate you do it, the more precise, the more seamless the effect will actually take place and will actually appear on the screen. Um, but more or less, we are just frame by frame going over. As you see, it's already starting to slow down a little bit, which means that in a second, we can definitely start going for the, uh, the good old two frames over. In fact, I might even just jump for it right there. Of course, two frames is making it happen twice as quick, so that's obviously very welcomed. Um, but just like that, we can go to the beginning now, and we can see the effect is taking place. Um, just like that, you could see it. And I'm going to go over another two frames, bring this over, bring it over here as well again. And we are just smoothing it out those edges. So then we can press Control S in a second, right? In fact, let's, let's do it right now just to stay saved. Um, but once we've actually done the entirety of this, we can actually save it. And, um, and then we can go back into Premiere and we can actually, you know, put the clip underneath it that we're going to be transitioning to actually manually in ourself in Premiere. So we don't even have to do that in After Effects, which is obviously using the best of both worlds. The pen tool is better in After Effects. So we come over here to, to utilize the pen tool. However, the, uh, you know, just composition and, and framing side of stuff in Premiere is absolutely fine. And, uh, you know, arguably better than After Effects, which means that we'll want to actually go ahead and, and use the the premier kind of uh, strengths, if you will. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go over there and we're going to add the clip in in a moment. All we got to do is just keep going over two frames by two frames. As you see, we are nearly at the finish line. Keep going over two frames by two frames, bit by bit, if you will. And we're nearly there. What we could also do in a second is maybe do a little bit of a of scale in so that this actually goes off the screen quicker and that could certainly be something however we can uh, we can have a look at doing that after if it's if it's a another little addition which could be nice but we're nearly there as we see we're just pushing over pushing over bit by bit bit by bit we're doing it there we go okay nice and we are going to have successfully, there we go, masked out this, which means that it's going to appear as though an object actually carries on the next scene, which is the desired effect we're going for. In effect, seeing how uh, how slow things have gotten now, it's looking like we're, we're three framing it. That's right, the good old infamous three frames. And here we go, bit by bit. So close at this point. I can practically taste the clip underneath it. One, two, three. Amazing. One, two, three. Amazing. One, two, three, four this time. Yep, that's, that's how we're doing it now. Yep. And I believe we will have one or two more. Yeah, one more after this, and we're done and dusted. Boom. And just like that, that right there is the transition taking place. We can press Control-S to save that, come back over here to uh, the actual files, and actually just drag and drop Mask Transition BG, which stands for Mask Transition Background, into Premiere Pro. Drag and drop this... Mask Transition BG into Premiere, which stands for Mask Transition Background. And now what we want to do is two seconds. We've got <laughs> we've got we've got a glitch on the screen for some reason. Um, as we can see right here, let's go ahead and load that back up. Um, we for some reason I forgot this file, which has just stayed on the screen for some reason. I'm just going to try and move this around a little bit and get rid of it. All right, well we're just going to crack on regardless. Um, but if we go here to go mask transition BG, we double click it. We want to actually get this, this point where it sort of comes around just like that. And just like that, it shows the prism logo, which is the club that I was booked to film that night. And what we want to do is actually go across in our clip right here, press spacebar to play and actually just go across until let's just press control S, make sure it's all saved. Jump back to editing actually. And right here we have the transition take place, right? So we want to actually go to the first frame of this transition being visible. Bring the actual clip above and actually just drag and drop our our other clip here. So we actually have this effect now that as soon as that goes out, the prism 
comes in. And in fact, I could even, I could even move it, move it a bit more so that essentially just like that, we've got this prism logo being revealed as the one, uh, you know, uh, object brings it on. And that right there is the real seamless masking transitions right there taking effect. Let's play that from the beginning. As we see, we actually did all the masking in Adobe After Effects, and then we did the composition of the framing side in Premiere Pro, aka doubling down on the strengths of each program. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Dynamic Link Masterclass. We are in the bonus section now. We're going to be editing a project entirely from scratch. I have a whole bunch of clips right here, a backing track, and we're even going to create an entirely new project. So without further ado, let's get to it. Let's edit an entire project from start to finish. Since this is a new project, it makes sense to make a new project. So let's go here to new. Let's go to project and uh, let's make a brand new project. But let's actually make sure to keep the root folder in mind. So let's go over here to full pro uh, to full project, which is our new folder within our, our other folder. And this is our root folder now. So we're selecting the folder and we're going to call this uh, full project premiere. And we're going to go ahead and press OK. And that's going to load us into a new project. However, premiere does this thing where you can have multiple projects open at the same time. So let's actually right click our our other kind of example project that we've worked on throughout the course of this program. And let's actually press close project. Let's, let's go ahead and save it, of course, because we don't want to lose any of that work. But we are wanting to operate in an entirely new, fresh project. And that's exactly where we're at right now. So here we are. Entirely fresh project. It makes sense to import the clips. So I'm going to go here. I'm actually going to select all of the clips. I'm going to drag and drop them and import them into Adobe Premiere Pro. And we're actually just going to wait for this to import everything over. And, you know, as it does that, uh, they should start appearing there as soon as it uh, kind of completes the progress of, of uh, you know, importing everything over. And pretty much we're singling stuff out, right? So there's going to be a couple different parts to this editing the full project. The first part is going to be the composition part, the actual, you know, putting everything together, piecing everything together. We're going to actually first go through the actual clips, decide what we want, decide what we don't want. That's definitely something we would do in Premiere. We would not do that in After Effects. We're going to also sync stuff up to the beat a little bit easier and more precise to do that in Premiere. And all the kind of special effects and, and the real, you know, heavy duty stuff, we're going to go over and uh, outsource to After Effects, if you will. But let this load up. As it goes right here, it should be importing everything now. And, uh, you know, just like that, it is, uh, you know, it's imported everything down here. We've got all the clips. That's right here. If I double click, it's going to start up right here. I can go ahead and press space bar to play. We've got some good clips that we're dealing with right here. Um, that right there is definitely an obvious transition that we can use After Effects for. And uh, we should be able to transition nicely with that by the looks of it. And we are pretty much just going to go through. So that clip... That's looking good. I'm going to keep that. This clip right here is not looking like a whole bunch. So I'm actually just going to delete that. And that's what I'm actually first going to do is I'm actually loading everything up. I load stuff up. I literally play it in the preview window here in Premiere. And I actually decide what's good and what isn't because we can add in and out points. In and out points is a strength of Premiere that After Effects doesn't have. The reason I keep emphasizing the strengths and weaknesses is because that's kind of the name of the game with Dynamic Link is that... You know, you want to use each program for the strengths that it actually has and, uh, you know, actually complement each of it. And just like that, that's a pretty nice uh, it's a pretty nice shot right there. This, these clips are of me in Piccadilly Circus uh, shooting a whole bunch of different content with, uh, with, with my friend Noah. And um, I'm literally just playing some stuff right here, deciding what I want and don't want. So that right there, I'm liking that. I'm pressing I anytime I want to start something somewhere. And then I'm pretty much just playing stuff through, seeing what I like. I like that. Definitely, we're going to keep that. Load up the next clip. Go ahead and play this. That, eh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not too 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 keen on the uh, the super close-up right there. But I'm literally just scrolling over and playing stuff through. Seeing what I like and what I do not like. That right there, that's looking like it kind of could be cool. Or I guess we could potentially reverse it and use this as a transition. Because it does go entirely past this this right here as you see right there so we could have me filming here right i'm literally just planted stuff as i as i watch through it and then we use that as a transition that's a perfect transition right there so that right there is 100 percent what we're going to do i'm going to go here go ahead and let that 
start from there and we'll be using that as our transition clip now i'm just going to play through you see what i see what i mean i'm, I'm just opening this stuff up i'm sort of mentally seeing what stuff you know goes best where and uh i'm overall just sort of seeing seeing what i've even got seeing seeing what i'm looking at it's looking like this is a clip of me actually walking into the the uh the thing the phone booth i'm actually just going to go ahead and delete that one that's not what i'm looking for right now keep playing and here comes a very cool shot a very cool combination of shots this is on my friend noah's gimbal as you see right here he is actually doing a full roll where you can have actually have the, the gimbal do a full 360 right there and we also not only did we get the shot coming um actually from the back right but we also got the shot coming from the the front i believe so as you see right here this is from the back of course um so we got two versions of the uh of the front of the back shot and i'm just going to start it off here start it off right there and then we definitely got the uh the front the sh front front shot as we see right here and it actually fully turns around amazing so we can actually do a really nice transition there where we can actually you know have we'll have one of the shots go to sort of half completion and then it turns into the the other shot if you will so that's going to be really nice i'm already seeing we could do something like that and that will definitely involve after effects as well we can uh we can maybe complement it with some radial blurs so i'm mentally editing mentally editing with what's going on and i'm i'm sort of just already starting to put stuff together in my head but the reason i go through shot by shot first off is to actually know what i'm even sitting on to know what i've even got if you will so i'm looking like this could be a a nice little bit of variety actually as you see right there maybe if we uh if we zoomed in a little bit on the shoes i know these are actually 4k clips which means that we're only going to edit in in uh in 1080p so i'm thinking that you know if if we're editing in 1080p and these are 4k clips we're actually going to have a nice little bit of extra uh room to work with so i think i could throw in a couple a couple nice cropped bits uh it's looking like a that shot's not really to my liking but that's more or less the first started this is the full project guys so this isn't just one little micro micro moment this right here is the full thing so that is how i start a project you know the first the first start of any project is uh, is really just figuring out what you've got so you're looking through your footage you're seeing essentially what's there what you're even sitting on and this right here is looking like a pretty nice establishing shot we we were going into chinatown and um more or less that's that's the the first half of uh of more or less any project um any serious client project or anything like that as well that's looking like a really nice shot we can do something with for sure and it's looking like we might have another another twister shot for sure as we see right here but i think we we got we got those twister shots from earlier so so i think um, i'm actually just going to delete that it's not i'm not too worried about that that's looking all right that's kind of a cool walk past the camera type type moment we could uh we could maybe do something with that and that's really what it is identifying the cool stuff and that's the thing the more projects you've got under your belt the more easily able you are to identify what's actually gonna work what's cool because you actually have some context to to base it on if you will and that's kind of the name of the game really so let's have a look what we're dealing with here this is a this is a really nice shot right here of the actual lanterns that are hanging all around chinatown and i'm actually just gonna go ahead and delete that clip that's not really anything and this right here is this something uh could be let's have a look looking like it could be yeah something something can be made out of that i'm sure it's a nice close-up that's what i'm talking about good stuff all right there we go that right there is everything chopped up now what i want to do is press Control s save that and i want to come here and bring in the backing track the backing track is something that we're going to actually start syncing stuff up to the beat as well so first off i want to drag and drop the first clip into the make a new sequence button and i want to go up here to sequence sequence settings and drop this to 1920 by 1080 nice and simple awesome and we, what we can do is actually give this a play 
and see if we want to do something with this. If I come over here, give it a play. We could do something with that. Potentially. Maybe start here, something like that. Bring something over. Or maybe speed it up, potentially. Uh, I'm not too sure. I'm, 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 I'm going to put that on the backboard for the time being. For the time being, I'm just going to import our backing track. This right here is made by a friend of mine. And what we're going to do is just double click. Double click the clips and just load them up. And just have a look at what we're dealing with. Go ahead, double click. We, we've got our clips, so let's start putting stuff together now, basically. And I'm actually gonna set this to frame size. Looks like that. Next clip. Drag and drop. And I'm just gonna try build a basic, a basic outline of just clip to clip, if you will. And let's see what we can do with them. Let's have a look at what we can do here. Let's see if right here, we could actually bring this over here. See what this is looking like now. Press play. There we go. Not too shabby. And what we can now actually do is I've, I've already saw where we're actually going to be, where we're going to be bringing something in. So this, what, what I want to do here is have this play and then right here, as soon as it goes, uh, as soon as this tick happens, it starts the transition. And by the time it hits here, the, tr the the clip is already in full effect. Now, what clip are we going to have? I think what we're going to have is the good old, the good old uh, kind of establishing shot type of type of shot. So not this one, this one right here, this one, and we can actually have it come up. So maybe at that point, it'll be quite a gradual one. Definitely quite a gradual one, but it'll be it'll be worth it for sure. And I think what I'm actually going to do is just do that basic composition first. So just like I said, I'm doing the basic compositions. We're not going to jump ahead of the gun yet. But what we're going to do is just keep... It's just keep positioning stuff, right? Position the stuff, framing stuff up, and we'll see how this looks. Okay, it's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely liking it so far. It's gonna transition from probably here, and I'm just gonna leave this clip underneath. And what we're gonna do after we've put, uh, put everything together, we're actually gonna go through and create a mask here so that this clip right here actually reveals what's underneath, which will be this clip right here. And then it'll chop away here. There we go. Then it'll continue. Let's have a look. There we go. Next clip up. Boom. Next chop. It's a little bit of a slower paced edit, but I'm definitely going to tie it all tied in pretty nicely. And that's for sure. And here we go. Already looking really good. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to zoom out a little bit and I'm actually going to zoom up there. So what we've got now is I'll play from here. There we go. Nice. So the flow is already coming together a bit. All we've got to do is keep putting stuff together. And then we're actually going to, in this, in the next little section, jump into 
After Effects. Now here I want to do something interesting. Interesting. There we go. 50. Okay. Okay, so I've done a slight keyframe, scale out keyframe. Interesting. And the beat's actually about to drop up here. Invade. Right. So on the beat, what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of that effect from earlier. We're going to take advantage of doing that piece together. That twist. The twist right here is going to twist out there. And it's going to twist. Or it's going to twist out here. It's going to twist in there. And the way we're going to do that is actually make this 200. Make both of them 200. Speed up by 200. King which I believe will put it at that'll put it at normal speed so what we need to actually do is go ahead and put this at 400 and bring this over here bring this here amazing and that's 400? Okay. 600. Let's have a look at what 600 looks like. Okay. I know what I got to do. Put this on 100. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to open this up a little bit. Go to right click speed and come in and we're going to make a slight speed ramp. A speed ramp is just going to link everything together a little bit. Make Make this work out a little bit more. We're going to bring that all the way up to, to 600. So that's a bit more gradual. You see, when you do just a straight up speed change or a, a time duration, it looks a little bit forced. But when you do a speed ramp, it's a little bit smoother. Invade. And just like that, Invade King. we can actually speed it all the way up to a significant amount. Invade. And just like that, we can now set to frame size and bring this one in over here but start it off way up here 700 plus and go go across and bring it in probably like right there because that is the middle of both of them if uh we're trying to make these two sort of look like they actually twist into each other when of course they don't but as we see right there, it should stop right about there. Invade. And we're, it looks like we're tying it together nicely. Let's play, let's play this. Invade King. Oh, we're having a little bit of lag right there. No problem. Invade King Beats. Okay, and we want to bring it back a little bit more. Invade King let's have a look. Invade King Looking like we might want to speed that other one up a little bit as well. See, it's all a fine tuning tweak game here. You got to tweak it down. Invade King you got to tweak it down every time. Let's have a look. Invade. Invade King Invade. Let's have a look. There we go. I think we're getting it now. Invade King Beats. King Beats. King. There we go. Invade King Beats. King Beats. I think we're going to come up. Interesting. So that's where I think I think we're going to come over from. Bring this here. Bring that up a bit more. Bring it over. And maybe chop right there. Amazing. Let's press Control-S to save that. I'm actually going to come over here. And 
I'm just going to chop that down just for the sake of flow for a minute. And we're just going to play this from the beginning and see what happens. It's looking good so far. Nice. Looking nice. Looking nice. What I, what I got is a little bit, a little bit to do here. Just the tiniest bit. What I want to do is I want to see what happens if I just do a little bit of zoom. A little bit. Maybe, maybe a little bit more. Maybe potentially 50 to, 50 to 60. Let's have a look. And maybe bring this one over here. And potentially have this one coming out a little bit. Or a 66. There you go. So this one goes in, the other one comes out. Invade King Beats. There we go. Nice. So we're looking good so far. We're looking very, very nice so far. Let's bring this one down right here. Let's have a look at what else we got. What else do we have to add to the good old inventory? And there we go. That's what we could do. So we could actually do a uh, is a a speed ramp straight up. Let's have a look at this. We'll, we'll do a speed ramp, or we could actually just do a framing. Just frame these. Frame it nicely. See what I mean? Frame this right here. Come over here. have a look maybe the full step there we go let's have a look at what we got here there we go so let's have a stepping clip now let's have a look at what we got something walking that one, of course, we've used. This one, of course, we've also used. This one right here, the end clip. This one right here is definitely a solid clip. Throw this one in right here. And I got a feeling we want to have it 60 to 50. So I'm actually going to animate that coming out a little bit. Yep. Let's have a look at what we got. And that could be the chop right there. Let's have a look. If we come to the beginning and play, it's looking like what we might actually have to do is just come over here, come to sequence, go to render in to out. And just process the work that we've actually done here. Now, this right here is section one, aka part one of the edit a full project. This is compose all the clips and sync them to the beat. That's what we've been doing here. That's essentially what we've been doing. We've been building the skeleton of our project. Now we're going to play it through, see what we've got, and jump into After Effects using Dynamic Link and add the actual advanced stuff. Not too shabby. So now, what we're going to do is start doing some advanced stuff. That right there concludes part one. Syncing, composing, and building the skeleton of our full project. Alright guys, welcome back to the Dynamic Link Masterclass. We're continuing editing a full project. Here's what we ended with. We built the skeleton, and now it's time to jump into After Effects and add a transition right there using the pole. And also... What we're going to want to do is add some nice radial blur when we do this spin effect coming up. It's a really nice spin effect without radial blur. I can't wait to throw some radial blur on there and see what happens. And then also we'll come back for the title and throw uh, the comeback for the third part rather. Throw some titles and some uh, some color grades on there. So let's start off with this clip right here. Let's right click it. Let's go to replace with After Effects composition. And let's let After Effects 2020 or 2019 by the looks of this one. 
um, load up. Should be 2020. We're going to have a look at which version we get. And it's going to actually load up here. What we're going to want to do first off is save the project. It'll make us save the project. We'll go over here to full project and we'll call this the after uh, effects version of the full project. We'll say full project after effects. And it's going to load our clip up. Now, what we want to do is scroll over until we find the first frame that the actual, that the actual, you know, behind of this pole is showing because we want to actually blur, uh, mask it all out essentially so that we can do the transition. So it looks like that right there is the first measly little bit that's showing through. We're actually going to highlight it with a mask, come over here to mask, click invert, invert the mask and actually turn on the mask path. And then actually we're going to go one frame ahead and just go ahead and drag that off the screen so that it's not there there. Then it comes here. And then the next one, of course, it starts. Now we also want to add a little bit of feather, not too much, but enough, a little something so that it's, uh, it's poking through essentially. So, well, so that it doesn't look so forced more or less. And just like that, we can actually go ahead and adjust our mask, go over another frame, go up and adjust our mask even further. And voila, we've started the process of doing this good old fashioned masking transition. And uh, we're going to try and create a nice seamless transition right here. So let's keep going over. And more or less, we are going to keep adjusting stuff until we have actually um let's create another point right here actually until we've actually fully transitioned on or fully created a space which is actually transparent so that we can actually use that space in premiere to transition on our clip underneath which is going to be that kind of nice establishing shot of chinatown which i think is a great shot and uh, that was actually got by my homie noah and we're just going frame by frame over and just adjusting it to this pole, to the kind of the edges of this pole. We've got this cool guy with the shades here who was just posing for us. I don't know what this guy does. I don't know if he's got a job or or, or, or what his day-to-day -day routine would look like if we were to, you know, really be a fly on the wall watching him. But I know he was posing by this this <laughs> this um this phone box. And other than posing for us, he didn't really seem to have any other agenda or anything else he was necessarily worried about cracking on with in particular. So I'm actually going to go ahead and assume that he either guards those 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 phone boxes or he is homeless. Um, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. I think he was waiting for someone potentially. If we're going to give him the benefit of the doubt, I just know that actually I'm, I'm, he, he might have just wanted some attention to be honest because I think he... If I'm trying to remember correctly, we, we were, me and Noah were, were out filming and we were filming these, these actual phone boxes and he just kind of came and stood there with the glasses on and he definitely looks like quite a character. Love to, you know, have lunch with the man, hear a couple of stories from the golden days, but essentially this is what we're doing guys. We're going frame by frame and I'll tell you what we're going to do right now, two frames at a time now. So once we've done a nice little bit of, of outlining, I'm just going to go two frames by at a time now and you see how much ground we're actually covering when we do those two frames now because it's sped up which means we can cover a little bit more a little bit more ground with our masks and and overall save us a little bit of time down the road but as we see right here it is a simple process just keep going over and keep sort of getting rid of anything that's showing past the pole and just like that we have actually made it to the end of the sequence however it's looking like we might need to go here and go to composition settings and, and make this a little bit longer maybe six seconds or something because i'm pretty sure there's still yeah I'm, I'm pretty sure there's still work to be done so i'm not entirely sure what the hell after effects is playing at right here but for some reason the composition wasn't as big as we needed it to be that was a little bit strange, but we're going over bit by bit and it looks like we are successfully done with it now. Done and dusted. Everything's been masked out. We're going to press control S to save that. And when we come over here and actually press space bar to play, we have a transition on now, which works really nice. 
and it really wasn't too hard to do if we're being honest we can actually press Control s save that now next what we want to do is add some blur so we got two clips right here i want to actually highlight them both right click go to replace with after effects composition and it's actually going to go ahead and load this one up for us amazing wait for it wait for it there we go phenomenal it's looking good it's looking very good don't get me wrong and i'm actually going to go ahead and and have a look at what we're doing here but it looks like it transitions right about there so what i want to do is i want to oh we'll leave it screw up we'll, we'll leave it i want to go up here to layer go to new go to adjustment layer and what i actually want to go ahead and do is have the uh, adjustment layer go from here to probably around right there all right and what i want to do is i want to have some radial blur i'm going to type in radial i'm going to drag and drop it right here and at the at this point the middle point i want it to be 10 but at the start, I want it to be zero. And at the end over here, I want it to be zero as well. So I want to try and create this effect where it builds up and at the middle, it's blurred, but then over here, it's normal. So now we've got this effect, which after literally a couple keyframes, creates this nice blur. And honestly, we could even go harder. We could do, you know, 20%. And see what that looks like. 20 might be a bit much, but but I know 10 worked pretty nicely. And 20 is definitely too much, but you know what might be? Fine, 14. 14 might be a nice amount. And just like that, we have a more believable twist, right? A more believable, much more believable indeed, uh, rotation. And it takes place using the radial blur. And just like that, we've pressed Control S, we've saved it. We can come back over here to Premiere and play it. And you know what? I'm starting to think that it starts a little bit too, a little bit too early right here, right? I'm starting to think that, honestly, maybe if we actually open this one up here, we open effects up, we go to Radio Blur. I don't think we want that big of a, of a build up. I think we actually might want a smaller build up right here. So it just goes boom. Let's have a look. There you go. That's what I'm talking about right there. The absolute max point right there. There you go. Press control S, save it. And now we've got this. And just like that, there you go. Okay. And there seems to be a, uh, a one, one single black frame for some reason, but we could drag and drop that over there. Press control S save it and just like that we're building it we are building this now what i can actually do here is i can actually just go ahead and chop that right there and bring this down or actually you know what it's going to take up two two rows anyway so i may as well bring it down over here you know what we could do we could go up here press to render it and out see what we've made so far see what the dy dynamic link has really you know has really done for us and then what we're going to do is come back and do the titles and the color grading to tie this all together and complete our full project but it's looking good so far. Just like that, we've actually masked it. Nice, everything's tying in pretty nicely so far. And just like that, that was real smooth. Just like that, we've, uh, we've done it. We've done it successfully. It's looking like I might wanna, yeah, leave that on the screen for a sec. Nice. Looking real nice to me. Looking real good indeed. And now, let's come back and finalize everything in part number three. All right, guys. Welcome back to the Dynamic Link Masterclass. We are finalizing stuff right now. Here it goes. The finale of our full project. This right here is what we left off with. It is a nicely built 20, just over 20 second sequence. What we want to do right now is put the finishing touches on it. We want those titles. We want the color grade, the stuff that really ties stuff together. Without further ado, let's get to it. We've built something very nice indeed. We've added some nice effects using Dynamic Link. Now, let us actually complete the thing. So first off, let's go to the beginning. Let's have a look what we want to do. Let's have a look. I think, well, first off, we definitely want to open up graphics. Once graphics is loaded up, what I want to do is actually come over here to edit and I want to press T, open up the 
the actual text tool. And I just want to go ahead and press play. And just see where I'm going to add some stuff in. It's looking like I want to go ahead and maybe bring this in a little bit and bring it over so I can actually add a, a title right here and and maybe go ahead and tap on the screen right and write um, um a short film go ahead and move that right here maybe actually go ahead and position it in the middle drag it over here actually get Gotham go ahead and get Gotham black right there bring it over here and actually just go ahead and play and now we've got the text a short film so is that looking uh, to my liking I'm liking it all right it's okay it's okay what I could do is I could actually come over here and just go ahead and add some gen shad, some shadow to it. So I've got a preset called gen shad, just a little bit of shadow. It says a short film, a short film. Now I'm actually gonna zoom in on me, a hundred, and actually come up here and maybe zoom out a tiny bit. And what I could do is add Another t uh, another title right here. It says something along the lines of uh, starring Jack Cole. I'm just trying to make a, a intro title sequence essentially. Starring Jack Cole. Let's have a look at this. Maybe pop that up there. So let's have a look. So we got a short film, a short film. Okay, maybe starring Jack Cole here, potentially. Maybe it says a short film. Maybe, uh, maybe starring Jack Cole. Starring Jack Cole could be what I could do is actually just go ahead and um, actually copy the mask over as well. Maybe that's big right here. Let's have a look. Let's play this. A short film. Starring Jack Cole. And what we could do is actually just go ahead and right click. Go over here to... Uh, replace with After Effects Composition and see if we can copy over the mask. I'm not entirely sure if this will work, but I think it's a good little try just to finalize the dynamic link section and see what we can do. At the end of the day, I'm not entirely sure what has happened there. I'm starting to think this is uh, that's a little bit messed up, but let's come over here. Let's have a look and find the, the mask. The mask itself. Now, is it possible to copy that mask to, for example, some text? So, for example, if, if we had some text down here that said, starring Jack Cole, right? Gotham, uh, the same Gotham. Let me type in Gotham, get Gotham Black, the exact same Gotham, exact same title, right? And we had that down here. And maybe it was pre-composed so that it's all one, one kind of same dimensions. And we actually went here, copied, and pasted. Would this work? It would kind of work, but kind of at the same time not. Let's have a look. M, the mask appears down there for some reason. But when here, the mask is there. It's slightly confusing but it's sort of not at the same time. Um, now what we could do is interesting. Okay. So 
It's just a little bit of repositioning, a little bit of repositioning. Let's have a look. I'm just trying to make these, make these match up, make the actual masks match up perfectly. So I got to bring it down the tiniest bit. That is a bit too small. Bring it up the tiniest bit. Now I got to bring it down. Now I gotta bring it up a tiny bit. See, these are the fiddly bits that will make a difference. Trust me. If we get this working right now, if we get this working right now, this is uh this is definitely gonna be very legit. Let's come back over here. See, see what's lined up. Yeah, it's not. Um. Hmm. It's looking like it's gonna be a bit too much of a pain to really get done. It's possible. Uh, I don't know. That's, that's actually looking like it worked out all right. But the only reason that would work out all right is because the text is there. Uh, my bad if you guys don't even at all understand what I'm doing. But I am definitely trying to make something that looks uh, that looks pretty decent. And I'm thinking, you know what? We could probably do this if we simply make it in the middle. There we go. Pop it right here. There you go. Starring Jack Cole. Pop me in the middle right here. Boom. Bring it over. And it's looking good now. Now we can come back over here. And just like that, let's have a look at what we're looking at. Starring Jack Cole. Just like that. Starring Jack Cole. And underneath it, can be our logo. If we come back over here, what we can do is we can actually come here. We can actually get the TQ9 Media logo and actually pop that underneath so that when it goes past, we have the TQ9 logo. A little bit of shadow on there too. And uh, what we should also do is uh, drop, drop shadow, throw a little bit of drop shadow on the actual on the actual text itself. Boom. Press control S. Save it all together. And just like that. We've got the TQ9 Media logo as well. Right there. Make it a little bit smaller. And just like that, we've uh, we've done the titling. Now all I want to do is actually come over here to to the actual, you know, media area. Go up here to file. Go to new. Go to adjustment layer. Yes. Put it at the top above everything. Drag it over. And actually, first, let's just... Let's actually probably just... Probably just cut it right here. Um, or, you know what? We can actually bring a final title here at the end. The end. the end pop that in the middle chop it chop it there go ahead and make a key frame uh, key point keyframe actually bring that off at the end awesome perfect just like that now it fades out and it is done and dusted we can go ahead and press O to put an out point there and finally let's actually go ahead and get our adjustment layer and actually just go up here to color and what I want to do is I actually want to use a preset right off the bat something easy we can use to tie everything in together is use a preset um, and that is come over to color and actually just go ahead and put a Alexa v3 on the adjustment layer and when we do that a couple clips might need a slight bit of adjustment but as soon as we've added that that right there is gonna boost everything instantly and it's gonna give it that that kind of you know, extra boost to the color. Essentially, that's going to bring stuff out of it. Now, these sh these clips right here are shot on the Panasonic GH5, which gives a fair bit of a flat picture profile, but something like this, a little preset, can bring out a lot of color. As you see right here, it's definitely boosted stuff pretty nicely. And this is our project now. Just like that, we have something that is, uh, you know, very, very nice. Looks pretty nicely colored. It's synced together nicely. And it's using different aspects of dynamic link, just like that right there. That's definitely an advanced effect. And what we can actually do is, 
first off, I think the highlights need to come down a little bit and the blacks need to need to go up a little bit as well. Press control S, save that. And actually go ahead and export. So to export, all we do is we press control M and what that would do is that would actually open up our our you know export window and what we'd actually want to do is go ahead and click here and actually just go over to our our folder our dynamic link master class go to full project and call this uh final export full project press save and actually just go ahead and click export and that right there is going to process everything and it's actually going to render it for us so what we can do is come back in a second and actually just watch the completed version the final export of our full project, three parts, guys, three whole parts, composing all the clips, opening After Effects, doing the actual masking transitions and the motion blur, and finally doing all the titles, the color grading, and, uh, you know, the final little bit of tweaks that we did to tie everything together to make this particular edit right here. And we're going to be able to watch our, our final masterpiece, if you will. We're coming over here. We're going to go to full project, and we're actually going to go ahead and watch this right here. And, uh, and see what we're looking at. And it looks like the uh, the volume's muted by default, so we can unmute that. Go ahead and play it. Nice. Invade King nice. Nicely done. Nicely done. And overall, that right there is the editing of full project start to finish in Adobe After Effects and Adobe Premiere Pro using the Dynamic Link. Thank you guys for coming along with me. It's been a hell of a ride.